Hello everyone, I'm Bishy, and today we are playing more Hollow Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. But we're in the first game. Uh, we're in the middle of episode, case, whatever you want to call it, three. Um, we should be finishing the first day of the court, the trial today, and then we'll see what else we can do. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're doing. Of course. Of course. Just waiting. Just waiting. <laughs> I still feel like I'm making good progress in these games. I'm only playing two games right now. So I can focus on those. There's so many other games I got to play eventually. Like when I finish uh, the first case of this game, I do want to get back to Chronicles and finish that because it's been on the back burner for so long. And then after that, I think I want to get back to Persona. And then at some point I want to play FF7. Maybe not in the exact order I listed. I don't know. It's all jokes until you take a hiatus and come back absolutely jacked up. Oh, come on. <laughs> Honestly, I would love to look like that. But I just, I don't, to, to be real, I don't have the discipline for it. You know what I mean? Like, I just can't make myself sit down. Or not even sit down, but just like actually seriously work out consistently to get a big muscles. I would love to be a little bit more muscular. Uh, I just, I'm lazy, you know? <laughs> I like to just sit down in my chair and watch videos and edit stuff. So lazy, but maybe someday something will just click in my brain and I'll be like, I need to be buff right now. Then I'll drink a bunch of protein shakes and <laughs> I suggest anchor arms. Ah, yes, the SpongeBob route. <laughs> you know, that's actually a great April Fool's idea. And you know what's so funny? I actually thought about that of like, is there a way I could do like an April Fool's stream where I just show up and I have like a muscle suit or something? Because they make these uh, cosplay pieces that are like uh, um, like a buff chest and everything. And you can wear them uh, for your cosplays. Like if you're cosplaying as... Um, like a shirtless dude or something, you can have this like whole piece on. Um, and uh, they're expensive though, so I would not get one for a joke. Uh, I would only get it if we would actually use it for like uh, cosplay purposes. But yes, the silicone chest gets expensive surprisingly. They do, they really are. I think they're like $200 plus, something like that. Uh, they're up there for sure. So me and Ruben never made the jump to, to get them, even though I think we could put them to use for cosplay. Uh, but anyway, it's so funny that we are talking about this because I just thought about the other the other day. Oh, what if we had one of those buff cosplay pieces and then I wore it uh, for April Fool's or something? Any plans for the weekend? Any plans, anybody? I am going to a friend's birthday party actually tomorrow. I thought it was going to happen on the weekend, but it's not. It's happening tomorrow. So I won't be here tomorrow. Sorry. <laughs> I keep canceling Fridays. It's not on purpose. It's just things keep happening on Fridays. You know, will there be a clown? Um, technically, yeah, because I'll be there. reminds me something else I would really love to see in person someday is the northern lights I would be ecstatic to see that but I don't know when I would ever like make the plan to to go travel to like say Alaska or something like that I feel like you have to go uh to Alaska to see that want to see the northern lights. wouldn't that be so cool that's one of those things I feel like is like once in a lifetime you gotta like make the trip at least once you know but not not in the near future for me I just I'm still trying to get to Japan, you know. That's the big thing. After that, Northern Lights, <laughs> perhaps. I want to do an Alaska cruise. I, I've heard that's a good way to travel there. That is a good way. I, I've i been on a cruise once, and I feel like that's been enough for me. <laughs> I It's not like I hated it, but it wasn't like my favorite. I don't know if I would want to do a cruise for it. Maybe I would just fly there. I don't know. Oh. Plus... I think the Alaskan cruises have to go through the, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, the pass. That's like really, really choppy, scary water. I don't think I would 
be able to survive it. Even if the boat is fine, I feel like my soul would leave my body. <laughs> Being in the, the Drake's Passage, yes. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be so scared. If you want off of the boat, you could always swim away. That's always an option. With all the sharks and stuff, yeah. I would I would go fine. <laughs> well, I, I was trying to think of a good segue, but I don't have a segue. We're gonna play Ace Attorney now. <laughs> We're playing Ace Attorney, there's nothing that you can do about it! Let me see if my controller will turn. You know, there's something that this controller can do about it. It can turn on or turn off. Put that to work. Apophis will be interesting in 2029. Is that another comet? What is that? I have not heard of that. We are going to switch over there. But I want to talk more about space, so that's absolutely fine. Let's do it. Here we go. Oh no, Emma! The sharks! Be careful! I, I can't. <laughs> I cannot do like Australian other than, oh no! Like, that's it. That's it. It just turns into British. Uh, Apophis is an asteroid that will pass so close to Earth in 2029, it will be closer than a lot of satellites. Oh dang. Oh dang. And that's relatively going to happen soon. It's only in a few years. You object to being on a boat that long. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all are more creative than I am today. <laughs> I would love to see that asteroid, though. That'd be really cool. All right. Let's do this. We are doing more Ace Tourney. Like I said earlier, we are in case three. Right now, we're cross-examining Emma. Uh, oh, let me pull up my notes. That'd be a good idea. I always forget. All right, let's see here. What was the last few things we did? Um, the Siren, who I've nicknamed Lammy, has amnesia, doesn't remember anything before becoming a singer. Uh, I also have a note to not forget the mysterious man in the yellow suit who kept appearing and disappearing when the body went missing. Uh, we found an earpiece outside the door of where the murder happened. Uh, during the last performance, they had a beat mess up from Darian. And then the lyrics of the song predicted what happened, or it's a copycat killer or something like that. And I have some information about the revolver. The victim was Lammy's interpreter and manager and bodyguard. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've just got a bunch of notes from, from last time, which I'm glad I did. You never know. You never know with Aza Darn. They might ask you, uh, the distance between one object to another that they talked about one time. <laughs> Honestly. Oh. Oh, um, correction, 2029 was the year it would have impacted if it were on a slightly different trajectory. I feel like I remember hearing about that. Okay, I didn't recognize the name Apophis, but that does sound familiar. Like there was a close call with a comet that could happen in a few years. And we have ruled out that it will hit us. That's good. Because I don't know how much I can handle. Much more I can handle in my life right now. <laughs> uh, asteroid impact! Potentially killing all life on Earth. I mean, yeah, that would not be very good. I don't know if it would have done that much damage. But hey, that's scary. That's a scary thing to think about. Okay. What are we doing? Look at this. So we've got a murder. We've got Lammy the Siren and her, um, not helper, the pianist, a uh, little boy that plays the piano, uh, is the accused, and we're trying to prove that he is not guilty. We have already cross-examined Lammy the Siren, and now we're re-cross-examining Emma for the second time. Okay. I believe Machi stole the body because of some lyrics. He moved the body to match Lamarwar's song. Oh. No one in this country had a motive to kill the victim. And Machi practically left his signature at the scene. All of this evidence clearly points to the defendant. Hmm. Lamarwar's song? Yes. The guitar serenade. You noticed its code, too, did you know? Its code? All the events that day followed the lyrics to our song. First, the keys my heart held onto so tightly were stolen. 
Then, Prosecutor Gavin's guitar burst into flames on stage. Mr. Latusa's life was taken by a bullet. The rest hardly needs explanation. Guitar, guitar, up together to the sky. That's mad! It's like a story out of some fairy tale! I admit, I'd forgotten about the song. But there it is now, waiting for me. The grand finale, as it were. Hey! You know, I was the one who first noticed that. I've heard of jumping rope to songs and counting to songs. But killing? It's a wild world out there, Herr Judge. Very well. We've heard one song and dance. Let's get on to the next. The cross-examination. I'm not so sure I'm going to be doing much singing. Right, Emma. Think much you stole the body because of the lyrics. Who would steal a body just to match some lyrics? I didn't believe it myself, but it can't just be a coincidence. It is, as Fraulein Detective says. Let us begin with the first verse, if you would, Fraulein Detective. What? You want me to sing it? You are the witness, ya? Yeah? Or did you want me to sing? I warn you, my fee as vocalist is not trivial. I'm fine. Ahem. <clears throat> Let's look at the first part of the lyrics, shall we? When you stole away the keys, my heart held on to so tight. Indeed, my favorite heart-shaped key ring was stolen that morning. Next, we go on to the right page of the lyric sheet. Where we find, burning on in my heart, fire, burn my love away, all away. <laughs> and the beautiful CGI. As we know, Prosecutor Gavin's something, something, something. Something, something, something. Hold on. Uh, as we know, Prosecutor Gavin's guitar burst into flame. Like a bullet of love, fire, take my life away, all away. Mr. Latusa's life was taken by a bullet. Bravo, Fraulein Detective. You're singing. It's not bad. In fact, it wasn't singing at all. You were just speaking out loud. Now, for the finale. Guitar, guitar, up together to the sky. As it says in the lyrics, Mr. Latouse was found with a guitar high in the sky over the stage. Hmm. No series of coincidences could be so well conceived. He's right, scientifically speaking. What would Walkie have said? That concert was whack. It's hard to argue when she pours her heart into it like that. Uh, um, <clears throat> anyway, the shooter. Okay, let me look at the lyrics again. In your embrace, stole away the keys my heart held on to. Leading melody wraps itself around me. And now through the air I fly. Turn my love away, all away, like a bullet of love. Take my life away. Guitar, guitar, up together to the sky. Okay. Move the body to match Lamarwar's song. Does the prosecution have any idea why he would do all of this? You want my scientific opinion? No clue. But he clearly had a reason to go through all that trouble. Some deep reason. A deep reason? Not only did he steal my keys, he torched my guitar. Unforgivable acts, even if he had a reason. And worse if he had none. The diva's complaints aside, I can't imagine someone doing this on just a whim. Fraulein Detective, I take offense at that description. Indeed. It does seem too well rehearsed, shall we say. Yes. This crime was planned for sure. No one in this country had a motive to kill the victim. But Mr. Latouse spoke English. He may have come to this country before. I looked into that, I assure you. Oh. It was his first time in the country, it seems. Apparently, he learned English on his own. Right. You see? No one here had a motive to kill him. And certainly not in such an elaborate fashion. Hmm. It does seem difficult to imagine. Unless our famous prosecutor did it as a publicity stunt. What did you say? 
Prosecutor Gavin, you did this to promote your song? Of course not. But I am quite dismayed by the ludicrous nature of her claim. Why would I need promotion? Everyone already listens to my music. They're even in my textbook at school. But I'd never heard of them. Let's say about me. I was just kidding. Don't get all worked up, Glimmer Boy. And Machi practically left his signature at the scene. <laughs> he was Duolingo's top student in English. Number one on the leaderboard every week. What do you mean by his signature? The bullet holes in the wall, of course. The bullet holes? The revolver was fired twice. One shot missed and left a hole in the wall. There's two holes. That means what exactly? That dressing room isn't exactly spacious. Picture the shooter facing off with the victim in there. They can't have been more than five feet apart. It would be difficult, almost impossible, to miss at that range. Difficult to miss, you say? Very. Assuming the shooter could properly aim. No. You can't be serious. Hachi! can't see. Oh. That's why he missed? It's the only explanation that makes sense. I'm sure there's other explanations we could think of. He used sound and other senses to fire the gun. Poorly. That reminds me. The monitor in that room was blaring at the time, yeah? Hardly ideal conditions for tracking by sound. Blind shooter. No wonder he missed. Oh my god. I knew those bullet holes would come back to haunt me. Think, Justice. What do I do now? Ooh. Um... Uh, I'm gonna save, first of all. That's what I'm gonna do. Well... Probably object? Sure, there were bullet holes left in the wall. But that doesn't prove the shooter couldn't see. Oh, how so? Well, there could have been a struggle with the victim. Hmm, that's certainly possible. And it might have been the revolver's fault. The revolver? The revolver was a very large caliber, correct? Yeah, I was thinking at least, like, if he had been the shooter, he would probably have a dislocated shoulder. I mean, that that was a whole conversation that we had with Emma. Um, so I don't know how, you know, we're just automatically assuming it's him when he doesn't have seemingly any injuries. What's that? <laughs> My stream skipped for a second. That was scary. Like, the revolver is is a super, super strong gun, basically, and the person who uses it, unless they uh, know what they're doing, is probably going to injure themselves just trying to shoot it. So, I don't feel like it makes sense that this kid is the one that did it, you know? We'll see how this goes. I said this is one of my favorite cases, but not because it was one of the best written ones. It's so obvious the kid didn't do it. Right? It's like, come on! <laughs> Come on! Uh, the revolver was a very large caliber, correct? If the shooter wasn't used to firing such a large weapon, why, it could dislocate their shoulder! There you go. Exactly. The defendant, Machi Tobe, is, as you can see, tiny. It's not so hard to picture him firing the gun and missing entirely. The kickback alone would throw off his aim. Oh, but then we're just... Hmm. A convincing argument, to be sure. Ha! Take that, smug prosecution. We're helping them. Um, hello. Huh? What? That bit about Machi being tiny and the gun throwing off his aim? Um, aren't you kind of, uh, admitting that he did it? Oh. It does not matter why he missed. What matters is that the shooter was without a doubt the defendant. Even the defense seems to agree on that point. Yerk! Uh... Cripes! I really put my foot in it this time. But let's get the facts of the matter on the record. If you would, Fraulein Detective. Very well. Witness will add this to her testimony. Right. It might still help us. Hmm. So she's being... Oh no, so she's being more clear about what she means now. Okay. Uh, so are they really thinking a small child dragged a six-foot-tall man up on a platform? Right? Like, there's no... It, <laughs> it makes no sense. We have to convince them. In the state of the crime scene, I conclude the shooter was blind. Hold it! I can't say he was blind just because of those bullet holes in the wall. 
I think I've proven that. I wouldn't call it proof per se. Huh? You've merely raised a possibility. Well, so did you! Yours is just a possibility! Fraulein Detective has made a most logical conjecture based upon the evidence. Of course, there is more evidence than just bullet holes. The defendant was the only one who could have escaped through the air vent. Objection! There, that's, the, that's the problem, too. But wait, if he was blind, how would he know about the air vent in the first place? Ah, a very good point. Well, Fraulein Detective, if you would care to explain. He certainly seems sure of himself. Recall the crime scene, if you will. There was a stepladder below the air vent. As it happens, maintenance was scheduled for that day. Custodial staff went around checking all the air vents. I don't believe it. Everyone backstage was told about the maintenance, including Machi Tobai. He would have he would have known that there would be a way out at the top of that stepladder. That's why is this the first time I'm hearing about this? You could have figured it out for yourself. You only needed to consider what that stepladder was doing there. Hmm. Looks like the defense's objection has been squished by a stepladder. Well, hair forehead? Out of ammunition, perhaps? Never seen Prosecutor Gavin so aggressive. Maybe he's caught the scent of blood. Hollow, don't you have something? Anything? You know what we need? We need something to prove the killer could see. That'll put him in his place. Proving the shooter was sighted would do it. That would take down one of their central points. Do I have any evidence that can prove that, though? Hold on. Maybe. Maybe. Let's see. Let's look. Is there anything about the gun? I think so. We already looked at this and there's C. It's the mixing board. This was found in the victim's hand. Oh! Well, you know, maybe. Because that's wiped away. I I don't think that this guy did that, right? I feel like the victim wrote down something in blood and then someone wiped it off. So maybe this is the evidence I can show. Maybe. Is there anything about the crime scene? I mean, I can't think of anything. That might be it. Let me try that and just go with it. Fine. I accept the prosecution's challenge. I might be jumping to conclusions, I don't know. As I knew you would, Hair Forehead. What exactly am I up against here? The prosecution is saying the shooter missed because they couldn't see. Therefore, Machi, who's blind, did it. The defense will please present their evidence. Evidence that overturns the prosecution's claim that the shooter could not see. I'm gonna try it. This is that evidence. Photograph of the crime scene? I don't care much for the smirk on Prosecutor Gavin's face, but this is no time to think twice. Time to press on. Yes, Your Honor, the crime scene. There is something in here that decisively contradicts the prosecution's point. Then perhaps you'd best show us this something. Get your finger out of the breeze and put it to good use, Yang. Yang? Very well. Show us what you're talking about, Mr. Justice. Contradiction at the scene of the crime is this. Take that! The contradiction is right here. The smeared blood stains. Hmm. I thought it was just my blurry vision. But it really was blurry. The way the victim's hand is raised above his head, much like a gesture I have seen many times in this court. It's almost as if he wrote something. Ah, I get it. At least I think I get it. Get what, Fraulein? When Mr. Latouse was shot, he tried to write something. And what would he write but the shooter's name? 
And what would he write it in but his own blood? Pretty good, huh? Thanks for making my point for me. <laughs> yes, in fact, that's what I think happened here. Hmm, that does seem to be a distinct possibility. The victim wrote the killer's name. It's certainly a logical conclusion. Crap, I just wish it wasn't all rubbed out like that. Of course it's rubbed out. Why, if I were a killer, I certainly wouldn't want to leave my own name behind. Neither would I. Uh-huh. Um, no one has anything else to say? About what? So the, prosecu the prosecution accepts this? You agree this was the victim making an attempt to record the name of the killer? And that the killer tried to rub the name out? What's your point? What's my point? Let me ask you this. How did the killer know the victim was writing their name? Well, Mr. Latus was writing something in blood. Once the killer saw what it was... Wait. <laughs> Once he saw what it was? But what did you just testify about the shooter? I said they were blind. Ack! Uh-huh. Yet the crime scene itself contradicts that. The killer had to have been able to see. Why would they rub out the name in blood otherwise? Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. May I remind the court that the defendant Machi Tobai is blind. He couldn't have been the shooter. Impossible! <laughs> order! Order! Prosecutor Gaffin, please explain to me what all this means. Hey, Arkham, welcome in. Howdy. I mean, looking at this photo, it seems quite clear that the shooter could see. Yet up until now... It seems I owe the court an apology. Hmm? Gaviners are a band with law enforcement ties, yet a murder occurred during our concert. Apparently, this caused some confusion over, over jurisdiction. As a result, some reports were not filed in an entirely timely manner. I... I'm not sure I like the vibe I'm getting here. Hey, Apollo. Look at him. Why is Prosecutor Gavin all relaxed and smiling like that? Like he knows something we don't. And he's about to tell us. <laughs> I've got an idea. Let's rock! With these documents... But before that, I have a question for the Fraulein Detective, if I may. What? What? Tell me, why do you think that Machi Tobai is blind? Huh? What, what did he say? What are you saying? Of course he's blind. Of course. He, he's the blind pianist, right? So, so he's... Doesn't Lamarwar lead him around by the hand all the time? No way. I have a report here on the defendant Machi Tobai. According to this, Machi Tobai can see perfectly well. Oh, shoot. What? Oh, man. His blindness was merely a publicity ploy by those clever Bor Borginians. He can see quite well. Objection! Oh, my God. But, but you said... What did I say exactly? Hair forehead, not once in the course of this trial. Have I claimed the defendant was blind? The only one who did was Fraulein Detective. But, but that's a significant fact, yes. Consider Machi Tobai sees, and he was the only one who could have fled through the air vent. I see no problems with this. But what about the bullet holes in the wall? Yes, the bullet holes. I believe Herr Forehead neatly explained those for us. He didn't miss because he couldn't see. It was the kickback from the 45 caliber revolver. A simple accident, in other words. And how's that? I'm afraid your objection has just flown off for brighter skies. This is where the real fun begins, Herr Forehead. <laughs> He's doing his own updated autopsy report, yeah. Man. Just like a eye doctor appointment. I knew you didn't have what it took. You you jerk! Just what was I in here for? Comic relief? Yeah, apologize! <laughs> oh, sorry. That's no way to apologize! He's angered the trucy now. Look out. Ahem. <clears throat> I can please end the bickering. Now. Whatever. I'm not leaving. I can't leave like this. I'll come up with some clue to solving this case if it kills me. But your testimony has already given us enough to convict the defendant. Say that. Ah, <laughs> Aha! Uh -huh. What? Oh, aha! Uh -huh. 
This blood stain. The criminal tried to wipe it off, right? That seems to be what happened, yes. We might be able to find out what was really written here. Really? You can do that? That's right, with this. It's called luminol. Maybe you know of it? It's a chemical that reacts to blood. Ah, oh, yes. Have we done those tests yet? Ha! Huh. As if I'm gonna tell you. The blood stains covered a section of the carpet. In order to perform blood tests, that section was removed and submitted. Perhaps we should request it here in court now. Oh, wow. There it is. Right. Go for it, Apollo. Huh? I have to do the test? You just have to spray the luminol on it. Chemical that reacts to blood. Heard of this somewhere. It's funny that they're just letting him do it. Yes, I believe an analysis is called for. Have at it. Right. Ready? It's easy as pie. Just press A to spray an area. Here, give it a try. The eyes of the entire quarter focused on me. Hello, your hand's shaking. Oh, ah, let's do this. Huh. Wow, it really works. This must be, this must be the power of science. It says, IPXX31 4206. Hmm. Is that the killer's name? It's like a username. Hmm. Maybe it is. If the killer was a robot. Huh. I have it. So what is it? I thought those letters, uh, IPXX, looked familiar. This is an Interpol ID number. Interpol? Interpol? You mean the International Police Agency? Yes. Most are undercover agents working to solve international crimes. But why would he write that number? Why would Mr. Latus even know a number like that? Good show for our line detective. Rock on. Huh? Your Honor, we can verify this number immediately. Daria, are you there? Come up to the witness stand. Darian's here. Who sounds totally different from Clavier. Darian. You heard what we need. Go check into this Interpol ID number. Sure thing. Give me 30 minutes. No. Give me 27. <laughs> a robot or a good password, right? Hmm. I'm not sure what to think of all this. <laughs> Time to tamper with the evidence. Oh. Phoenix 2 forged boogaloo. Prosecution's case is airtight, or so it seems. Yet if this number is really that of an Interpol agent... Oh, wait. I know. What if Machi Tobai is really an undercover Interpol agent? That would be a possibility. Possibility, yes. Isn't he a kid? And one that would mark him as the killer for certain. Why did Latouse know an Interpol ID number? That's what I want to know. Well, we have some time while we await Darian's report. Let's work on unraveling another mystery, shall we? A curious mystery concerning Machi Tobai. What are you talking about? Fraulein Detective, please accept my apologies. I received word that the defendant could in fact see just before the trial began. It seemed too much of a bother to tell you. You had me until that last bit. Does this not raise a rather straightforward question? Well, sure. Why did Machi pretend he couldn't see? Exactly. It makes little sense. What do you think, Hair Forehead? Huh? Me? Machi Dubai pretended he was blind. You know why. How could he know? Wait, Prosecutor Gavin knows why, doesn't he? He's known from the start of the trial. He's been leading us on the whole time. Hmm? Something wrong? Do you think, perhaps, this is all some kind of game? Called Ace Attorney? Machi is a spy kid, confirmed! Just don't, don't bring out the thumb people, please. <laughs> don't let them be real. They can't hurt me, they're not real. Know that the moment I heard that report, I knew why. Hmm, I suppose people who have sold over a million records really are something else. What does that have to do with anything? There was a reason why Machi Tobai pretended to be blind. 
But it wasn't for his own sake. Getting the picture now? It wasn't for himself? Well, Mr. Justice, can you present evidence that shows us why the defendant had to feign blindness? Um, I probably have something. Apollo sure does have a big forehead. I guess that's why he keeps calling him Hair Forehead. <sighs> the thumb people are very much real. Have you seen Shimano? Okay, but that's the only one! And Shimano's also not real! <laughs> so he can't hurt me! <laughs> oh! Um, okay, let's see. Why he would pretend to be blind. Oh, I guess she says, well, hmm. I don't know if I have evidence unless it was that. Maybe it'll be this. Yeah. Hachi had no reason to pretend he couldn't see. Which means, no, couldn't be. Good show, hair forehead. It seems you've thought of something. Can't I figure these things out on my own? I hate having to take my cues from this guy. Very well. Look at this. This is why he was pretending he couldn't see. Um. Let me look at this again. Uh, I'm gonna try this. I don't know if that's the answer. It is. That is. Amawa? Lamawar and Machi Tabai recall their relationship. In particular, their unique arrangement over the years before visiting our country. Lamawar and her pianist. They would always walk together, she leading him by the hand. Even when they got on stage, she would lead him to the piano. She would walk all the way over there with him. That's right, because he was blind. She led him at all times, never letting him go. All times? Hmm. Yet, we have just learned something that makes their arrangement peculiar indeed. Machi could see. Why do they have to keep up this act the whole time? Well, wasn't it part of their, uh, performance? I think there's a simpler explanation. Machi did not need to be led by the hand at all. That can only mean one thing. Huh. Ah, ah, really? Really. It was all the other way around. The one who needed to be led by the hand was Lamawar. What's this? So you mean to say that Lamawar is... She's... Yes, Your Honor. Lamawar is blind. I did not think of that. At all. I chose this one because it's like the only thing that's about Lamawar, and I knew that it had to do with Lamawar. So they could be... I don't know. Huh. I did not think that. I still got the right answer, but uh... Dang. Did the thumb thumb scare you, Vishy? For me, it was the people with the weird creatures he would turn the politicians into. Oh god, I don't remember those, but probably. <laughs> the ones that spoke backwards? I mean, that sounds terrifying already, so... Maybe those were so scary I made myself forget them. <laughs> yeah, the thumb thumbs were, um... They were very creepy. Very creepy. The ones on Floop Show? I don't... I don't remember that. I'll be honest, like, the Thumb Thumbs are, like, the only thing I really remember from the movies. <laughs> like, that's it. And then, of course, like, the two main characters. But, like, that's it. It's been so long since I've watched them. <laughs> okay. Yes, Your Honor. She's blind. What? Now I'm, I'm surprised by this. Order! Order! This is crazy, Prosecutor Kevin. Is it now? Please, please shed some sanity on this madness. The defense has made an outrageous claim. The only thing outrageous I see about the defense is his vast forehead. Yet I see it is not vast in vain this time. He is quite correct. But, but that makes no sense. Yeah, wasn't she supposed to be the landscape painter in sound or something? Well, since we have her here, why not ask Lamawar herself? I believe she is still in the witness waiting room. Hello. What does this mean for our case? Don't ask me. I had no idea that she couldn't see. I hadn't even imagined it up until now. Huh. Aleph, bring in Lamawa.
Clem a while. It pains me deeply to call you before us again in this way. And yet I must. Please, do not be concerned on my behalf. Those eyes. She really can't see? Really? It is true. How funny it is that a tiny lie born in the Virginian countryside would one day grow to entangle the entire world. So, so you are? Yes. As I mentioned before, I have no memory of the time before I became Lamawar. Know, too, that my memories begin in darkness. The word light has no meaning for Lamawar. I see. You may recall me saying something toward the beginning of this trial, Hair Forehead. What's that? I believe I said it was unfortunate this crime had no direct witnesses. Ah. Now, Lamawar, I must ask you to stand once more. Will you testify to the court about your eyes? Of course. It was never my intent to deceive any of you. May I begin, Your Honor? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, of course. Though I admit I'm a little lost here. I think we're all a bit lost here, Your Honor. Lamawar's Eyes. I remember liking Spy Kids when I was little, but I haven't seen it since I was a kid. I haven't seen it in a very long time. Okay, let me look up what you're talking about. I'm, I don't want nightmares, though. <laughs> I don't want to be scared. Oh my god. And then they spoke backwards? That would be scary. Well, I'm scared of them and the Thumb Thumbs now. <laughs> I'm scared of all of them. Okay. <laughs> I have no memory of the light. I debuted in a world of darkness and sound. My producer came up with my PR line before he knew this. So silly as it may sound, I had to pretend I could see. Everyone on my staff knew, of course, but no others. Hmm. But this is a murder trial. I apologize. It was part of my contract, you see. I was to keep my blindness a secret no matter what. Music is everything for me. I never imagined something like this would... She told us the truth in the beginning. She said she saw nothing. It's true. Very well. Does the fence have anything to add? I'd like to cross-examine. But what is there left to ask? There was one thing in her testimony that bothered me. Perhaps it is best we let you get it out of your system. Someday you'll come to understand the importance of thinking for yourself. Very well. The defense may proceed. However, be aware this court will not tolerate any questions deemed too stressful to the witness. Okay. There was only one part that bothered me. Just let me ask about that and I'll be happy. Okay, so I'm not supposed to press on anything but the one thing? Is that what's happening? Let me save. Maybe it's not that severe. Sometimes they say stuff like that, and then it's actually fine if you press them. I have no memory of the light. Yes, they would say, uh, Floop is a madman, help us save us, scare the crap out of me. The Thumb Thumbs were goofy and friendly, though. I mean, I'm a little bit, the, the, what are they called? The, yeah, the, the other creatures are, um, a little more scary looking, especially as a kid. Oh, sorry, I did not mean to press that. Oh my god. What did she even say just now? I'm sorry. Um, I debuted in a world of darkness and sound. Weren't you nervous to hit the stage in your condition? No, not at all, surprisingly. It felt natural, singing in front of everyone. It's not something just anyone can do. She has talent, that much is quite clear. You might even say she's loved by the gods of music. Even without light, I live perfectly happy in my world of sound. If that is a talent, as you say, then I thank the gods responsible. What about your PR motto? Okay, so I can press her. Okay, hold on. Hold it! I have no memory of the light. So, you don't know why you went blind? I do not. I may have been born this way, in fact. It's fruitless to attempt to pry into her past. And, I might add, it's a delicate subject. I'm not sure we can reasonably expect Mr. Justice to do anything delicately. Wow. Hey, I, I oughta. Take a deep breath and calm down. What I am now is all that I have. It is enough, I think. Okay. 
we did that one. My producer came up with my PR line before he knew this. Perhaps your music reminded him of the Virginian scenery? No, it was quite the opposite. The opposite? According to my producer, my music has a certain global quality. Global? Multicultural, if you will. Hard to pin to one region. When people listen to it, they picture the country closest to their hearts, which is why my music has reached so many. What a lovely story! It sounds like this producer might have known what he was doing after all. My songs are nothing more than a white canvas. To me, the real landscape painters are the listeners. When I think of that, I do not mind how I am represented to the world so much. Yet one thing quickly led to another. So silly as it may sound, I had to pretend I could see. Was that to protect your image as the landscape painter and sound? That does not m this the 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 blah 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 blah. Every Ace Attorney stream is a struggle, I swear to god. <laughs> that does not matter so much to me, really. But the label is quite concerned about it. A landscape painter who can't see. That's like a pianist who can't play, huh? I'm not sure you can compare your father to Lamawa. The world of commercial music is filled with these little white lies. Nothing is sacred when it comes to publicity. And one of my staff knew, but no others. When you say your staff, do you include Mr. Latus? Of course. He was my manager. So he knew. And that's what's been bugging me. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? I believe I know what is bothering our young defense attorney. You are thinking of when you discovered the body, yes? Is he right, Apollo? Yes, I was. Yeah, because he told us to talk to the siren because she's a witness. He's alive. Mr. Latus, can you hear me? Hold. Don't worry. We're going to be fine. Help us on the way. Can't see. Well, witness can't see. Hang in there, Mr. Latus. Tell me, who is the witness? The wi witness is si Siren. Huh. Mr. Latus told me to ask the witness, and he named you. Why would he do that? Also, by the way, um, I think we're getting a storm rolling in right now. So, hopefully, the stream is fine. But if something happens, I will try to come back as soon as I can. Why would he do that? He knew you were blind. I... I don't know. Tisk tisk. What did I just say? You need to learn to think for yourself. Meaning what? There is no mystery here if you recall everything he said. Think of his last words once more. Witness. Siren? We've heard them many times, along with little play acting by our defense. <laughs> I remember them well myself, but that statement is not to what I refer. I mean what he said before that. Yeah, he said the witness can't see. That's right. He tried to tell you. When he said can't see, he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about the witness. I see! Too bad the defense did not. Well, hair forehead. Try relaxing and looking at the facts first next time. Hmm. Order! Order! Recall Lamawar's earlier testimony. I was on my way from the stage to the backstage exit. There were two shots. I couldn't do anything to stop them. But she couldn't have heard those gunshots. I thought we proved that. That is not the most important point here. Hmm? The moment he was shot, Mr. Latus witnessed her through the w that window. Why else would he have named her as the witness? Huh. But I really did hear them. Two gunshots. And the man's voice. Unfortunately, such a thing was impossible. The window was closed. We have already run a simulation, of course. But it was so clear. If I heard that voice again, I would know it in an instant. Hmm. Your Honor! What is it, Bailiff? Can't you see we're in session here? We have the results back from the investigation. The investigation? Ah, the Interpol number that Mr. Latus left us. Well, let's hear it. We'll continue this cross-examination afterward. 
Negative for send. Your report, please. I asked Interpol about that number. I'm sure you'll find their answer intriguing. Quick work as always, Darian. <laughs> well, tell us about the murder. Oh, sorry, about the number. The defendant a secret agent? The agent registered under this number was Romain Latous. Oh. Huh. What? Our undercover Interpol agent was Mr. Latous himself. He was apparently in the middle of an operation. So when he wrote those letters, he was trying to tell us his own identity. And a cautious killer tried to wipe them away. Mr. Latouse was an undercover Interpol agent, so him being Lamawar's manager was just a cover, most likely. There's one other important detail I found. Well, out with it. It concerns that 45 caliber revolver, the murder weapon. Apparently, it belonged to Romain Latouse. He had an Interpol permit to carry firearms, and the registration number on the revolver matched. So the victim was killed with his own weapon. Makes sense. It's hard to imagine someone who wasn't an Interpol agent with such a large revolver. The victim was an Interpol agent on the on an undercover op. I gotta write this down. Yeah, it's really storming outside, y'all. It's storming! Um... Okay, so... Victim was... Undercover agent. Gun was his weapon. And, uh... The blood message was his own agent ID. Okay. I wonder how that ties into everything. It's got to tie in somehow, you'd think. Yeah, somehow. Thanks for looking into that for us, Detective Friend. It's a great help. Oh, no problem at all, Your Honor. I'll be heading now. Hold it. Lamawar? Wait. Lamawar? Something the matter? That voice just now. <gasps> Darian? Mr. Darian, is it? It was him. I am sure of it. <gasps> I was suspicious of Darian. It was him? Y you aren't saying. That voice I heard, talking to Mr. Latus, when I heard the gunshots fired. It was him. It was Mr. Darian. Is this some kind of joke? What? Uh-oh. No way. Oh, big thunder. Big thunder outside. The courtroom fell into such a chaotic state, the trial had to be suspended temporarily. I've never seen that happen before. Of course, it's not every day that you get an accusation like that one. Lamawar. Fingering Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I am so sorry. I can never take this phrase seriously. I can never take it seriously. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm a professional. I'm a professional. <clears throat> Not only is he a guitarist, he's a detective. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Could it really have been his voice Lamoir heard? Things were changing fast, and frankly, I wasn't sure I could keep up with it. Hey, no wimping out now, Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he got creamed as well? Stop! Oh my god, wait, where is it? I have a sound effect for this. Oh, please. Stop! You violated the law. <laughs> okay, we're saving. We're saving. See, like, I probably could have done all of this last time I streamed uh, Ace Attorney, but it would have taken a whole other hour and a half, I feel like, or another hour. Okay. Anyways, let's keep going. All right, investigation day. Two? I think two. July 9, 2, 12 p.m., Write Anything Agency. 
Hey, hey, Apollo! What? Um, well, you know, um, actually nothing. I mean, something. Or maybe not. Not with it. Suspense is giving me an ulcer. Well, you know, the trial today? I was thinking, if you gave it a score, what score would you give it? Score? Uh, gee. Golly! I guess I would, uh, or maybe, well, uh, just as bad as you. See, it's so, so vague. Clearly. Machi avoided a guilty verdict, which is something. Oh, I can't say I'm any less confused about the case. I asked Interpol about that number. I'm sure you'll find their answer intriguing. The agent registered under this number was Romain Latouse. <laughs> Gosh! Yeah. <laughs> and the victim, Mr. Lettuce. Who would have guessed he was actually an undercover Interpol agent? What a mess. And we don't have any idea what he was investigating. Well, true, but we know who shot him now. Lamawar told the whole court. Yeah, we gotta prove it, I guess. That voice just now. It was him. I am sure of it. That voice I heard talking to Mr. Lettuce when I heard the gunshots fired. It was him, Mr. Derry. It's another mystery, Apollo. I love mysteries. I don't. And why are you in this game? Speaking of mysteries, what's Mr. Wright up to? I wouldn't mind asking his opinion. Now that you mention it, I haven't seen Daddy around. What, is he some kind of stray that just wanders in and out at will? I wouldn't say that, but he has been going out a lot. Some top secret mission, he said. Top secret? Anyway, you can't just rely on him to save the day. And you've got me to help you. We'll be fine. Fine. Right. Well, time's a-wasting, as they say. Let's investigate. That's the spirit. Alright, so I could talk to her some more. Lamawar dropped a bomb in court today. It was Daria. Lamawar said she's never forgotten a voice, right? That's so cool. I guess. What's that called again? Um, elephant ears? I bet that's what they're called. Somehow I don't think that means what you think it means. And she has to be wrong this time. Wrong? Why? I mean, look. Those gunshots were right during the concert. That's right. I was burning up the dance floor at the time. Right. Do you happen to look up on stage? Maybe. At Darian, even? Oh, maybe at Darian, even. You bet I did. He is one of the Gavener's guitarists, after all. He's so cool. Oh. Right. All the Gaviners have a rock-solid alibi. I mean... He couldn't have shot Mr. Latouse backstage. So, the reason I got kind of, uh, suspicious of Darian is because during the song, he's the only one that messed up on the beat. And I feel like the beat, um, the part where he messed up is when uh, the victim was shot. And there was also an earpiece outside of the room. And it could have been his that he dropped or something. You know, so I'm like... I... I know it's probably him, especially Lamawar says that's the voice that she heard, but... We'll have to see how it all, like, plays together. I have a lot of, like, pieces, but I don't know how they fit yet. Maybe there's a third person with the same voice as Darian and Clavier. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say the whole band has the same voice. So if we see any more of the band members, they're gonna sound just like Clavier too. Uh, he couldn't have shot Mr. Lotus backstage. But Lamawar heard him, didn't she? She heard Darian backstage, right? Somebody's either wrong or lying very badly. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna write some stuff down. So, Lammy says she heard Darian talking to the victim. Time of the murder. So she heard him backstage. But does that mean he's the killer? Question mark. I don't know. I'm suspicious of Darian. I don't know. An Interpol agent. Hmm. I was wondering, what is Interpol anyway? Huh? Interpol? They are the guys who catch international criminals. 
Why can't they just call them international police instead of making up some silly name? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> you think he was investigating Lamawar? What? Why would anyone do that? She's not a criminal. She couldn't be. Don't be fooled by appearances is all I'm saying. But remember, I'm a magician, Apollo. I can spot a palmed coin at 50 paces. If only it were that easy. In any case, we know he was working on something. I wonder if it was something that has to do with something. That something being our case. <laughs> the last something, I mean. Something like that. Frankly, the whole thing is making my head hurt. What was Mr. Latouse up to? Ah! Ha 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 ha! Um, Jussie? Was that another one of your tricks? It wasn't me! I can't even make Mr. Hat laugh like that. Oh, this guy! Wherever the mundane gives way to miracles, a word is whispered. Grammar! Grammar? Also, the thunder is super serious right now. ASMR. Rain. <laughs> Jersey, what do you think enter and pull are short for? Oh, Trucy. Hey, the other day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eek! Who's there? Gone in a flash. Gone with the wind. We didn't just imagine that, did we? He was wearing a silk hat. Friend of yours? Hardly. We meet again. Oh, um. Nice to meet you. Who are you? And could you please stop smirking like that? Uh, oh, it's you! Uncle Valent! Uncle Valent? He's your uncle? No, silly. It's the great grammar. Valent grammar. Is it grammar? Grammai? Grammar? What's the pun here? Valent... It's, is it grammar? Like, when you write? Grammar? Grammar? <laughs> ye. It must be grammar ye. Grammary. Valent grammary? Amory. Amory? Grammary. Grammary. I'm trying to think of the joke. Amory. Whatever. It will be revealed to me in time. The Grand Magician. Yes, it is I, the Great Valent Grimari, as seen on television. And could you please stop smirking like that? It's been a while, Miss Trucy. Seven years, to be exact. My, how you've grown. Good to see you again, Uncle Valent. You look exactly the same. I'm calling him Dave. <laughs> Uh, Grimari is an old word referring to cult magic. Ah, okay. So it's not a pun this time. Interesting. I say Grammary. Grammary. Maybe we'll just call him Gram Gram. <laughs> um, I hate to intrude, but what is a great magician doing paying us a visit? I believe it was you who wished to see me. So be quick with your questions. And do not quail, quake, or quiver. I am quite tame. Though my stardom may sear the sight, I am quite down to earth when need calls. He does have a certain aura to him, it's true. Let's ask him about the case, Apollo. His aura sure isn't lost in our magician in the making. He's practically drooling with enthusiasm. After all, Uncle Valance, one of Daddy's best friends. That's why I call him Uncle. Oh, what? Daddy, you mean Mr. Wright? No, I mean my real daddy. Oh! Oh! Trucy's real father? See, I, I felt like it was leading up to something like this. She. Phoenix is taking care of her, but she is not his, like, biological daughter. Okay. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna try to save frequently from here on just because of the storm. I would hate to lose progress. Although, we are on the Switch. So, actually, we would be fine. Because the switch is magical. It doesn't die when the electricity goes out. 
which hopefully won't happen, by the way. But we'll see. Okay. Troop Gram Gram. I'm just gonna call it Gram Gram. He's Gram Gram. Magic Man Gram Gram. Yeah. Troop Gram Gram. Wait, Hollow. Don't tell me you don't know about Troop Gram Gram. Troop Gram. Oh, there he's trying to say Grammary? Huh? No. But it does sound kind of familiar. Oh, lost life! Lamentably listless lad! Do not know of the greatest troop of magicians on the planet! Valent Gram Gram. The name began to surface in my mind. It was a name I'd heard on television as a child. You bet you've heard the name. He made a cruise ship disappear and blew up an amusement park. Oh, and he made all this gold disappear from a safe. And then escaped from a high security prison. Um... You said he is a magician? I open the locks to hearts chained by mediocrity. This is the true miracle of Troop Gram Gram. Wait. What, Apollo? I do remember seeing you on television a long time ago. Weren't you with someone else? Like a duo? Duo? Yeah, you had a partner. Something Grammary. Yes. Zack. Zack Gram Gram. A masterful maker of magic. A capable crafter of shining showmanship. Why is everyone so quiet? Come on, Apollo! Daddy. Daddy? Huh? Oh, no way! Once upon a time, Troop Gram Gram included two grand magicians. Myself, Valent Gram Gram, and my partner, Zack Gram Gram. And this Zack was... Who is my real daddy? Trucy's father, a magician. I guess it makes sense. I had no idea. There wasn't much point in talking about it, not now that he's gone. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. I'm not lonely. I've got my daddy, after all. And you make me laugh, Apollo. Not that I'm good for comic relief, at least. Not that I see daddy around much these days. Huh. I've been remiss in remembering my reasons for my visit. Reasons? Two, in fact. The first being, of course... To see you, Miss Trucy. You don't know how happy I am to see you again, Uncle Valen. Now, what were you doing at the crime scene on April 2nd? At 6 p.m. I'm sure you are. Wait, when was the murder? Hold on. It was... July 7th. What were you doing at the crime scene on July 7th between 9 p.m. and 9.30 p.m.? Mr. Graham Graham? I would like to know the answer to that question. I'm sure you are. Not one for modesty, are you? <laughs> Stealing gold from the bank! And he wove it into his uh, outfit. His coat and his top hat. When I encountered you at the Coliseum, the first time in seven years, I could feign not contain my emotions. I wept oceans. And to learn you now defend that poor pianist, that blinded boy, was a hot topic of talk amongst the staff, you know? And defend him you did. Heh <laughs> well, it wasn't all my doing. Um, I'm his defense attorney, actually. My other reason for coming here today was this. That's a videotape? Quite so. A recording of the concert, no less. I've brought it for you, Trucy, on behalf of Troop Gram Gram. Will you watch it? Now we get to see this amazing cutscene as many times as we want. Wonderful. Amazing. Yellow hat man from Curious George looking ass. <laughs> Pleasure. But a fleeting melody. Hollywood wishes it could do CGI this well. I love how they're making me watch it again. And then they even did magic during the show. So I wonder if maybe the guy. This magician is the reason she was able to do that trick. 
Which, you know, even during the cutscene, I did see there's a little platform where she is. There's a place where she could pop up. So that would be the trick. Of course, it looks seamless because this is a cutscene, but there's a little square there, like a trapdoor to uh, come out of. Because uh, I kept thinking, like, what was that magician doing at the show? Especially backstage. So he was probably the way that they did this. I suppose. They could have remastered it, but chose not to. <laughs> I mean, it's already perfect, so why would they change it? Wow, it's almost as good as it was live! So what's the word? Mysterious. Uh, mysterious. There are more mysterious things than her song going on. Oh. Oh, sorry. I'm like, what is the tone here? It was so... What's the word? Mysterious. That's how it's supposed to be said. There are more mysterious things than her song going on. Way more mysterious. Ha 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 ha. This valiant Graham Graham has good reasons to be here today. But I wonder what his reasons were to be at the concert. Got the videotape. Okay, so maybe we can talk... Maybe I can present stuff to him. I guess we'll see. Always makes me laugh seeing Clavier frantically trying to put out the guitar. I know. <laughs> Let's see what he says. What's this? You would ask me for a miracle? Free of fee? Then thy wish be granted. Thy will be done. Thy evidence evicted into the effort. Uh, no evicting, please. Are all magicians like this, I wonder? Speed run! Speed run! He'll probably only react to the video, honestly. So I was wondering, that stunt in the middle of the song there... I didn't see a stunt. What about Lemoir vanishing and reappearing? Oh, that? I guess I'm so used to seeing that happen, I didn't even notice. So young to be so jaded. A simple sleight of hand. A petite... Prestidigitation. 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 Okay. That was alright. A modicum of magic from me to you. So that's why you were at the concert. Yes. I was there to watch my trick take to the air. So you're the one who knows how it was all done. Of course! I am like a deity, with the stage as my domain. I suffer no mystery upon those floodlit boards not grasped tightly twixt my fingers. It is a potent primeval power I possess. Yeah. It's a strong storm, y'all. I can hear the- Yeah, I, I'm sure y'all can hear it, especially when I'm talking. The mic is on. Yeah. It's a strong thunder outside. I keep seeing lightning through my window, too. Like I said, hopefully the stream is okay. <laughs> if we have a disconnect, it's not from my internet being bad. It's from the storm. Take this off. Um, well, you think you could tell me how it was done? Hey, now. Juicy? That's, like, totally against the rules, Apollo. Not during a murder investigation, it's not. My nun. My nun. My... 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 My nun. My nun! For my illusions are mine alone, monsieur. Also... Also what? Recall that the terrible occurrence happened later. Well after my illusion entranced the audience. Oh. Don't even ask. I won't answer. Too bad for you, Apollo. Whose side are you on? <laughs> Why can't it be both? It can't be both because I found out how to make my internet not suck. <laughs> At least for stream. I figured out the cheat code, okay? Should be fine now. No, you don't pray to the ISP gods this time. You gotta pray to Zeus himself <laughs> to not disconnect the stream. With his lightning. I, Valent Graham Graham, now make my leave, Miss Trucy. There's no need to rush, Uncle Valent. You should stay a while. Have some of the plastic spaghetti behind Bishy's camera. I'm afraid I cannot. I may not. 
I shall not. You sure? It looks it looks really tasty. I wanna go. It looks really tasty and delicious and made of plastic. But what's not made of plastic nowadays? Why not the food too? Come on. Take a bite. I shall not. I have been asked to assist with an analysis, and so I shall slink back to the scene. So, you'll be at the concert venue today? Correct! If you would call on me, come to the Coliseum. See you later, crocodile. <sighs> the whirl of his cloak and a wink of his eye, he turned and walked out through the door. Normally. Well, there you go, Apollo. Let's get cracking. Right. Valent Graham Graham. Got a few more things to ask him. Foremost among them, that bit of magic that made Lamawar disappear. And how he knows Trucy and her real father. I feel like he was involved in the murder. Like, maybe he made the victim disappear? And the body appear at the top of those- You know what I mean? Like, it might- Either he's the murderer, or he's an accomplice or something, but I'm very suspicious of him as well. It's not plastic, it's just sticking together because of the lack of the butter. Oh! <laughs> Some dry ass noodles. Okay. Um, we're gonna move. So we can go to the Coliseum or we can go to the Tension Center. Let's go here just to see if there's anything first. July 9, Detention Center Visitor's Room. Machi may not be guilty, but he's still a suspect. They don't have any decisive evidence. Yeah, but the only but only someone as small as him could have gotten out of the room. Right. The air vent. And he lied. Lied? Machi Dubai can see. Oh, he is here. Oh, Machi. Speak of the devil. He looks like he's doing okay. Forget. Why did we come here? It's not like we can talk to him or anything. Words are overrated. Feelings are what matter, Apollo. It's hard to build a court case on feelings. But since we're here anyway, I might as well get what I want to say off my chest. If you need someone to complain to, I'll listen. Oh. Oh. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Oh. Oh. My power flickered. My, my lights flickered for a second. <laughs> Uh-oh. All right, y'all. I'm going down with the ship. <laughs> I'm in danger, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Like I said, um, if our power goes out, hopefully it's not for too long. Uh, sometimes the power will go out for like five minutes and then come back during storms. Oh, did my stream, is my stream buffering or anything? Oh, I, it looks like I'm still live. They will never finish the game. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, we seem to be okay for now. I'm just warning y'all if, if something happens. Um, I can always use the internet on my phone to, like, tell y'all what's going on. Um, so if stream goes down, just hang tight and, uh, I'll, uh, get into the chat and tell y'all what's going on. Whether the electricity's gone for good or, uh, if it's just out for a little bit and I'll be back, you know? Anyway, I will do my best to keep y'all updated. If you need someone to complain to, I'll listen. I think she's actually worried for me. Hey! We'll see what happens. So, what did you think of the trial today? Phew! I'm glad he doesn't understand English after all. If he did, he would have been scared out of his mind by that trial. Hey, all's well that ends well. You have to be more goal-oriented. If he's innocent, we win. No, if he's found not guilty, we win. My, Machi might not understand English, but I bet he gets that better than you do. Okay. Huh? What? Well, maybe he does understand and he's pretending not to. I mean... If Lamawar knows English, he might know it too if they work together all the time. But what could I do? Maybe I just need to listen to everything first? I'm glad Lemawar testified. What a great person. She even got Machi off the hook by naming another suspect. Darian of the Gaviners, the detective. I wonder if Machi knows what happened. I mean, if he could follow how the trial went at all. If no one told him there's a new suspect, how would he know? 
Hey. What is it, Apollo? No, it's nothing. Hmm. I must be imagining it. Imagining what, Apollo? It's just, I couldn't help but feel that, I don't know, Machi... He doesn't understand what we're saying, right? How could he? He's a young Virginian. He doesn't speak English. Yeah, my bracelet is reacting to him. Huh? Maybe it's malfunctioning. Or it's scared, because you keep making those I'm so mad faces. Like that bad? Oh, big lightning! <laughs> Woo! Woo! That was close by. <laughs> Y'all better start talking to Zeus right now! <laughs> the bracelet's scared of the thunder! Zeus is angry! Why is he angry? What did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Machi lied about not being able to see. But what if that's not all he lied about? If you're curious about it, there's only one thing to do. You should ask him. I think it'll take something big to get him... Some kind of undeniable evidence. Oh, it'll be... It'll take something big to get to him. Some kind of undeniable evidence. We'll be back, Machi. Okay. I need evidence. To get... I guess a reaction? To get Machi... Um, we need big, decisive evidence. And then along came Zeus. <laughs> I love Hercules. I love that movie. That was definitely one of my favorites growing up. Especially, I liked learning about, uh, like, Greek mythology and stuff. So it's just, that's probably one of my uh, early special interests, honestly. Loved that movie. And the music is great. And Meg. Just existing. <laughs> okay, Machi's eyesight. So, Machi, you can see, right? Machi can see, and Lemawar can't. The whole world's gone topsy-turvy. Sorry, Apollo. I don't think we're going to get any info out of Machi. Which makes sense. Yeah, I guess it does. Okay. So, um, I probably don't have what I need yet. So we'll be back. Let's go to the Colosseum. Hercules is my favorite Disney movie. It made me a history buff because it made me interested in ancient Greece. There you go! Which, once you start learning about ancient Greece, the Hercules movie does have, like, certain things that are, like, not correct. Because it's Disney, and they always take, like, creative liberties with stories. Um, but it's still, like, a entertaining movie, you know? July 9, Sunshine Coliseum. Ooh, what a great day. It's perfect weather for sleuthing. Weather matters for an investigation. Don't some days just feel like magic days or defense days? Uh, sure. Let's get started, shall we? Right on. Show us your stuff, Apollo. Uh, what stuff? Your voice training. This is the perfect place for it. I did enough at home, thanks. Well, there's no need to be shy. Keep that up and you'll never make it on the big stage. I'm happy in the courtroom, thank you. I am a lawyer. And you're in luck, because it's lawyer weather today. Don't you just want to face the blue sky and shout objection? Look, the weather has nothing to do with lawyers. Let's get going already. <laughs> it has everything to do. Everything to do with it. All right, we're going to look at everything first. You can thank that movie for me watching two-hour video history of the Ottoman Empire for fun. <laughs> Greek mythology is the gateway drug to history. I feel like Greek mythology and um, uh, ancient Egypt. I think those are the two big ones that you can get really interested in as a kid. And can lead to having interest in history, yes. You know, speaking of, like, hours-long documentaries, I was watching this... It's actually, like, a compilation video on YouTube of three episodes from some kind of show on the History Channel from a long time ago. So, like, 
this is like an older documentary. It's nothing recent. But it was just talking about all kinds of like natural formations on the planet. And I found it extremely interesting. Like it talked about how Mount Everest technically used to be underwater because, you know, of tectonic plates moving and creating mountains and stuff. So it's like it's just really interesting learning about like the history of the planet and things like that. Um, and it was talking about the history of the uh, Sahara and how that also has been underwater, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of years ago. I forget how long ago, but it's really cool. Cool stuff. I love watching that kind of stuff. Yeah, Hercules would have been a very different movie if they went with the real myth, right? Like, <laughs> they gotta, they gotta take their liberties, I suppose. Okay, so we have some flyer things here. Guilty as charged, Gavinur's guilty as charged. So they're just talking about the song and the band. Live tour. And it has their symbol. Look, a blimp. Those balloons next to it have sponsor ads on them. Let's see. Big sale. All shirts. 50% off. Oh, it's an ad for the department store next door. Okay. Sunshine Coliseum sure is living up to its name today. It's huge. And Mr. Gavin got to play on that enormous stage. I'm so jealous. Someday I'll fight my first battle on this stage. Battle? Well, yeah. It's a coliseum, isn't it? Uh, they don't do gladiatorial contests at these places anymore, Shrusi. Really? I had no idea. I wonder why they stop. Sometimes I worry about her. <laughs> Speaking of ancient Greece! Oh. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's Blue Badger. I mean, that does explain all the Blue Badger stuff. Because they're, like, all police. <sighs> What's that creature there? Ooh, that's the police mascot, the blue badger. Oh, well, it's life-size. Haven't you seen them around town, patrolling the streets? Yes, now even Law and Order has a mascot. I'd run from that thing even if I wasn't a criminal. Why does its head wobble like that when it walks? It's freaky. I don't think you're showing true blue badger spirit, Apollo. I do like the blue badger. I do like him. Look, a massive sign for the guiltiest charge tour. A giant prosecutor, Gavin, stares out over the arena. Ooh, maybe I can take it to the office when they're done with it. Where would you put it? You couldn't even get that thing through the front door. And I'll put it outside. I bet it would be good for business. Just as long as no one comes expecting us to prosecute. Well, if anyone comes looking for a concert, leave it to me. It's part of some twisted plan of hers to make her singing debut, I wonder. I think that's it. Sheba! There's a Sheba! Yeah, that's it. Okay. So now we go backstage. More Blue Badger stuff. Oh, another series that made me obsessed with history was Assassin's Creed. Absolutely, yeah. I loved the Assassin's Creed games. The, the first few, anyway. They were so interesting to me, too. And, I mean, I wouldn't consider myself a history buff or anything, but there's certain periods of history that I would definitely sit down and watch a documentary about, you know? Um, and certain settings in history that I think are interesting that, you know, some of them are in Assassin's Creed and stuff. July 9, backstage hallway. Ah, Mr. Attorney. Lamawar. I'm sorry about today. I... There is nothing you need to apologize for. You were merely defending Machi. Um... Are you okay? Alone, I mean. Humans are blessed with five senses. Even robbed of one, we get by. Though it does make being a witness rather difficult. Speaking of seeing, you knew who we were before we spotted you just now. And we weren't even talking. I heard your footsteps several times the day before. Oh, you must have great ears. Ears that heard the crime taking place. Or so she claimed yesterday. But how? I mean, maybe the little window was open? I, I passed an American history test with an A plus because of Assassin's Creed 3. <laughs> There's a good ad for playing Assassin's Creed. <laughs> Helps you pass uh, history exams. Okay, let's talk to her. That was quite a statement you made today in court about hearing Darian Crescent's voice at the scene of the crime. I did not know his name, but I never forget a voice. 
So we just saw this. That voice was him. I am sure of it. No way! As I said in court, I was on my way backstage from the uh, backstage from the stage. That is when I heard his voice. I'm guessing Darian and Mr. Latouse were talking about something. The next moment, I heard those gunshots. Why didn't you call security? To be honest, though the noise was quite frightening, I never imagined the gunshots might be real. And I was in quite a hurry myself. I left the scene at once. So it really was Darian's voice that she heard. Yeah. At least she certainly thinks it was. I don't know, that earpiece could be the clue that uh, reveals everything. I met Machi before my debut as Lamawar. I was singing in a restaurant in Virginia, and he was playing the piano? Yes. He was very kind to me when he learned I could not see. Is that when you started playing opposites? With Machi pretending he couldn't see? No, it wasn't then. That began after our major debut, after I became known as the landscape painter in sound. It must have been tough for Machi, pretending he couldn't see and all the while acting as your eyes. We held hands always. He would write with his finger on my palm to signal to me things I should know. He is a smart, gentle boy. I think I see what she's getting at. Machi would never harm a soul. About Mr. Latouse. Ah, yes. He was an Interpol agent, I hear. So you had no idea? Of course not. No one did. I guess that's what it means to be undercover. But someone was after him. They had to know who he really was. Why did he pose as my manager? I do not understand. You have no idea? I can only assume that he was investigating me. But why? What makes you think that? Perhaps it is not so, but I cannot deny the possibility. Because of my condition. As my present, as my present is veiled in darkness, so too is my past clouded from memory. Clouded. Right. So, it could be that she did something in her past that she doesn't remember. I see. I see. Darkness. The darkness that I fear is not the darkness that I see whenever I open my eyes. The real darkness lies in my heart. In your heart? I have no memory of the time before I became Lamawar. I awoke from darkness into darkness, you might say. I was singing in a restaurant those days. What was it that she said about not being able to remember the light? I do not know my past. Perhaps I committed some terrible crime. Everything before becoming Lamawar is lost to me. But I don't think you... I can, I can think of no other explanation. Why else would an agent of Interpol approach me? You think your past might be related to this case? No way! That seems really unlikely to me. I mean, you're such a sweet person, Lamawar. I thank you. Machi, too, tells me this often when I fear who I might have been. Hmm. You never know. So I guess, uh, should we examine stuff again? I want to look at this for sure. No clues here. Oh, come on. There we go. That's been lying there since the day before yesterday. It's small. Maybe no one's noticed it. I kind of want to pick it up. It would make a cool souvenir, don't you think? It does stick out in my mind for some reason. Hmm. It's going to be important. I know it. It would not be there if it wasn't important. So we've talked to her about everything. We could try to show things to her. Otherwise, we can go to the stage or the two dressing rooms. Um, maybe I can present this to her? Save again. Okay. Let's try presenting the tape. Took a look at your performance again. It was even better the second time. Thank you. That reminds me. That was an incredible illusion you pulled off. Illusion? When you teleported from one stage to the other, remember? Ah, oh, yes. Apparently they hired a professional magician. Valent Graham Graham. I was wondering, do you think you could tell us how it was done? I'm afraid I cannot. 
Mr. Gram Gram made me swear to never tell a soul. I was afraid of that. Hard to be a magician if you can't keep a secret, you know. Ah, uh, I am reminded that I wish to speak to you about something. Yes? When I was walking this hallway before, I stumbled upon a small device of some kind. It was lying on the floor. Oh, so she noticed it. A device? Maybe you mean this? That's been lying there since the day before yesterday. Might I touch it? I thought as much. What? What did you think? This is one of our headsets. Everyone on staff wears one during a concert. Wonder whose this is. We use it for communication. It would be quite inconvenient should it go missing. We'll hold on to it for you then. We'll give it to Prosecutor Gavin when we see him. Yes, that's best. Thank you. So can I put it on? <laughs> no, Jissy. Receiver, transmitter for voice signals. All concert staff wore one. Attached? I'm not some kind of robot, Apollo. Everyone on staff was wearing one of these headsets. This might warrant some further inquiry. Let's look at it. And for that, little buddy, this is Trucy reporting in over. Why the sudden silence? No one answered. Don't be silly. What good is a receiver that doesn't receive? That's like Emma not performing forensic investigations. Make her sound like she's some kind of forensic investigation machine. Which is just silly. Unless she's a super high-tech android that runs on snackoos. Hmm. <laughs> Something to think about. That's it. Well, that got us that, so I'm glad I showed that to her. Um, let me just present everything and see what happens. Do you think you could tell me about this? I'm sorry, but my information about the outside world is somewhat limited. I only know what I have heard or felt. Maybe that explains why she didn't react when I showed her stuff the other day. She was still pretending she could see. Um... Uh... I can talk to her about this. Okay, probably nothing. Unless the lyrics... No. Okay, nothing. We're done. Um, let's move to the dressing rooms and then we'll save the stage for last. There's nothing in here. <laughs> I could examine, but I'm only going to examine if I have to. I don't really feel like it. Um, okay, let's try the crime scene. Nothing again. Oh, we can examine this because it's a little different now. Hey, look. Part of the carpet has been torn up here. That was the part we did the luminol testing on in court. Luminol. Right. You know what I couldn't stop thinking? Who's going to pay for this carpet? As long as it's not us. Maybe the shooter? I guess it's true what they say. Crime doesn't pay. I would hope that carpet replacement costs weren't the only thing holding it back. Murder weapon. So it belonged to Mr. Latouse. They just leave the gun on the floor. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. The gun is literally just sitting on the floor. It's it's just been left here. Well, let's hope it's just a replica. That thing makes normal revolvers look like water guns. Mr. Latouse was a big man. But how about the person who shot him? Wouldn't they have to be about his size? I mean, that was something I was thinking about too, because like... Technically, you would probably be able to see the trajectory of the bullet holes to see if it was someone that was, like, at his height or shorter. And, I don't know. I feel like these are not shot by someone who is shorter. It looks like it was just straight through. But, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I don't know if there's anything important here. We're going to move on for now. If I get stuck, I'll go and examine everything. Let's go to the stage. Right, it would be shot upwards at a slight angle. I don't know. July 9 in the wings. That's what I was thinking. It doesn't quite look like that. There's two different bullet holes, but... That song. Isn't that the one Lama Wire was singing? Yeah, you're right. The guitar's serenade. Wow, I'd love to do a show on a stage like this. I would come to see that. The house is full, and as one, the audience sighs with wonderment. There I am, singing my ballad, rose petals swirling through the air. Not bad. 
Wait, aren't you a magician? Oh, that's right. I was a magician, wasn't I? Some dedication. Speaking of magicians... Aha! It isn't Miss Trucy. And indeed it is. Uncle Valent. What exactly are you doing here? I take real responsibility in tasks undertaken. I am inspecting my equipment of illusion to make sure naught is amiss. The Lamawar teleportation illusion. Ooh. Should anything go wrong, it would reflect poorly upon me and my troop. As I went about my exacting examination, I happened to notice that piano. And I remember that fair lady's melancholy melody. Hey, Apollo. Maybe Uncle Valent can shed some light on this whole thing for us. Alright. Before we do that, I'm going to take a short break. I should be back in about five minutes or so. When I return, we shall continue. And uh, maybe we'll just get to the end of the investigation for today. And uh, do more of the court day next time. I don't know. Uh, we'll figure that out when I return. But yeah. I should be back in about five minutes. Feel free to grab a snack or a drink if you need it. BRB. All right, we're back. We're back. I actually saw one of the clips was something that we were just talking about yesterday. Um, if y'all scroll up, there's a clip from uh, when we were in the art category. And it's literally that drawing that Ruva was doing of uh, Cowboy Majma. We were just talking about that yesterday, how we, uh, or at least Ruva had started to draw a cowboy Yakuza before it was real. I thought that was kind of cool. It just happened to pop up. Oh, that quote reminds me I meant to say at some point that Gavin had put his whole Clavussy into that song. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Alright, I'll just look at all the little clips. Let's go! <laughs> yes! Newest quote, number 674. We're definitely gonna get to 700 this year. For sure. We can do 30 quotes in a year. Easy. We could do 30 quotes in six months, I feel like. We say some cursed stuff here, you know? Okay. Back to this. Um... We are talking to Mr. Graham Graham. Trying to figure out how he did that illusion. I was wondering about the show the night of the murder. Lemawar's vanishing act was your illusion, right? Indeed. The purple prosecutor petitioned my performance. At the climax of the song, he said, Make her disappear like a dream. Like a dream. Yet, what can I work with on stage on a stage meant for musical endeavors? There are none of the conveniences of a stage built for sorceress acts. It was a challenging task, and so I accepted it. She disappeared from the top of the tower. And in order to move, you would have you would have had to use some sort of secret tunnel. Yeah. People come to me because I am a professional among professionals. My illusions are custom made for a time and a place. Now, because of the murder, all the eyes of the nation are on this concert. Not a bad thing as far as the fortunes of Troop Gram Gram are concerned. So, you were here checking up on your trick to make sure it went well. And went well it did. Now, speaking of pianos... That piano over there troubles me. It troubles you? Why? Why? Why do you ask why? I think it's probably quicker if I just go check it out myself. Thanks. Okay, so look at the piano. We can do 30 quotes in six months. Adds to quotes. No! <laughs> we just start adding, like, everything everybody says. No, that's cheating. As cursed as this chat gets, we can make 50 quotes. I know. I know. <gasps> Troop Gram Gram. I know what you are thinking in that head of yours. Gram Gram, yes, you say. I recall seeing him on TV. Something of that sort. Um, actually, yes, you're right. Wow, he just read your mind, Apollo. It's just a cold read. Or everyone tells him that and he made a good guess. It was 20 years ago. A young magician, a genius of his time, came down among us. Oh. Oh! 
of all the animals? His name was Magnifi Gramgram. It was he who began the great troop Gramgram. At his prime, not a day passed that he did not play upon the screens of every TV there was. I do have a vague memory of someone like that on TV. Yet several years ago, that time came to an end. My troop pulled a vanishing act, yes. Cries for magic no longer heard, the TV screen a barren waste, stripped of illusion. That's not true. I still went to all your shows. Like that one in the parking lot down at the supermarket. When you start playing in supermarket parking lots, you know you're in trouble. We hone our skill at these small venues, always awaiting our time. Yes, one day we will rise up from obscurity onto fame's shining stage once more. I do this not only for the magic that is Gram Gram, but for my partner. Partner? You mean... Yes, Zack Gram Gram, Trucy's father. Before he disappeared seven years ago, there was no name higher than Gram Gram in show business circles. None. I will see us return to glory. I, Valent Gram Gram. Valent and Zack. Our founder, Magnifi Gramgram, was truly a genius, a worker of miracles. I'll never forget the one I saw when I was little. When he made that whole jumbo jet go. Um, what happened to the jet again? Apparently someone doesn't remember it as well as they thought. Of all the would-be magicians who came to his door, only Zack and I have the talent. In no time at all, Valent and Zack were the shining stars in the Gramgram crown. Cool, huh? And Zack Gram Gram was my daddy. Now that Magnifi and Zack are gone, I have but one wish. Let it be I, Valent Gram Gram, who brings the Gram Gram miracle back to the big stage. I'm rooting for you. Miss Trucy, you cannot grow up quick enough. I need your skill by my side. One skill coming up. How do we manage to get off the topic of the case so quickly all the time? Okay, so he's not gonna help us now. We're gonna go look at the piano. That's one big piano. I've never actually played one. Oh, huh. you should get Mr. Wright to teach you sometime. No good. He can't play either. I kind of feel bad for the guy now. Maybe now's my big chance. Stand back. This could be the debut of a prodigy. Oh. Ew. Did you make that noise just now? Um, let me try it again. Oh. You know, I think something's stuck in the piano. I'm gonna take a look under the hood. Huh. Look! This was stuck between the strings. Is that a lighter? It looks like some kind of switch. Someone must have thrown this into the piano. Found on the stage. Oh, it's not a lighter. It's a switch for something, and that's about all I know. Oh. Press the button! This switch sitting here, tempting me to push it. Don't. You might blow up the whole Colosseum. Oh, please. I think that every strange switch triggers a plot. That kind of old-fashioned crime drama thinking doesn't cut it in our busy times. All right, Trusu P.I., please enlighten me. What do you think this switch does? Hmm. Maybe it turns on the electric razor in Prosecutor Gavin's dressing room. A switch as big as a razor to turn on a razor? Okay. We're not going to do anything about this? Okay. Maybe I need to show it to him. Uh, present. Words cannot express my shock and chagrin. All I can see before me is the stage and me upon it. Nothing smaller, nothing less radiant catches my eye. True. You're getting on in years. Not much time left to make your mark, huh? This is not how I was seeing it. So he doesn't care about what I have to show him. I get the point. Okay, he does not care. Um, did I already show this to him? I was worrying about the stunt in this video, right in the middle of the song. I didn't see a stunt. Oh, that? I guess I'm so- okay, so this is what we already saw before. Simple sleight of hand, blah 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 blah. That's why you were at the concert. A magician never reveals his tricks. I'm surprised I can't skip this. Yeah, against all that is sacred to inquire as to how the trick was performed. I think 
some of this is different. Some of this is different. Will you tell us, Uncle Valent? It is against all that is sacred to inquire as to how a trick is performed. So you tell me how he did it, you see, but I don't know. You're a magician. Aren't you part of the same secret club? The magician school? I guess we're not presenting stuff to him? I guess? Then there's nothing else to say. Let's go back and maybe present to Lamawar? Do you think you could tell me about this? Yeah, my information... Okay, unless I need to examine more things in the background. Um, let me go to every area first. See if there's someone new to talk to. But it kind of just felt like a dead end just now. Like, I found the switch and then what are you supposed to do after that, you know? So maybe I need to stay over there. I like her theme. It's very pretty. Okay, nothing here. I doubt we need to leave, so let's go back to the stage and look around some more. Look for the piano. I still can't believe we found Machi and Mr. Latus up on top of the tower. Yeah, I used to not like high places. Now I hate them. It's not like it would have been nicer if we found a dead body closer to the ground. Well, that reminds me. Daddy's bad with heights, too. No kidding. He took me on a Ferris wheel ride a while ago, you know. Halfway through, his face got all green and he mumbled objection over and over. <laughs> Poor guy. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Guitar case. Now that's a big instrument case. That's a case for a contrabass, I think. Could fit 20 violins in there, I bet. Oh, that's the same. It may look like a violin, but it's a completely different instrument. Could fit five truces in there, I bet. Hey, are you comparing me to an instrument? I wonder who left it sitting open like that. Okay, so that's the same as last time. What else is there? They're gonna have the conversation about the ladder if I click on that one. How about this? Look at all the electronics. They must be sound related. Doesn't seeing a bunch of machines like this make you want to just fiddle with them? Can I, Apollo, please? No, no fiddling. You'll break something. If you're going to make an omelet, you gotta break some eggs. That's what Daddy always says. These eggs look kind of expensive. I don't think there's anything to see in here, and he didn't react to the... Did I present the right thing? He really doesn't care. Okay. He does not care. Just casually roasting him. Um... What else could I do? I could present other things to him and just see what happens, I guess? Oh, I say we rename the magician to Theodore Shackleford, the name of the yellow hat guy from Curious George. I had no idea who you were talking about before you said the second part. <laughs> I didn't know that was his name. He's just the yellow hat guy. Okay, let me show him everything before I move on from this place. I'm really surprised that him and Lamawar don't say anything about the switch. I mean, unless we need to take it somewhere else? What about the earpiece? No. Okay. Um... I think I presented everything else to him earlier, didn't I? Okay, I'm gonna assume we're done here, I guess. Weird. She doesn't have a reaction to it. Did I present the earpiece to her already? Can I ask you about this headset, Lamalar? You said that all concert staff were wearing one? That's correct. You need them to communicate across such a large stage. Everyone on the staff had one, of course. And all of the band members, too, I should think. So Prosecutor Gavin and his lackeys had them on, too, then. They're quite helpful, though limited. They only work within 30 feet or so. After all, they're only for use on stage. And a stronger signal would interfere with the sound system. That makes sense. You would think someone would notice if they dropped their only communications lifeline. So why was this one lying here? Okay, that might be important. So, um, we found a switch in the piano. 
and the earpiece only works within 30 feet. And it's important, so why would someone not notice they have it? They lost it. Oh, so he doesn't have a name in the book, but the show gave him a name. They're like, we can't just have this nameless man with Curious George the monkey. <laughs> we have to name it. Okay, I'm a little stuck now. Let's, uh, I guess let's get out of here. I must need to show this stuff to somebody. I don't know who. I know I need to show something to him, and really he's the last person I can do anything with, so maybe I need to show him something? I have these three things now? Okay, he's speaking. I think he said, I am sorry I cannot speak your language. You are very beautiful, fair maiden. This is why I never trust a translator. Same thing. Yeah, I don't have what I need yet. I didn't think so, but I'm kind of at a loss here. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I could go back and examine more things in the other rooms. Um. There really is nothing else to look at on this thing. So I looked at the button. And there's nothing else. Okay. We looked at the earpiece, so that's done. Weird. <laughs> like, I really felt after I got the switch, I should have been able to press it and figure out what happens or something. And then they didn't react to this. I guess let's go back. We can talk to three people right now. Lemawar, the magician, and the little boy. Um, I didn't see anything on the stage. The only thing I didn't look at was the ladder. So maybe let's go back to this room. Maybe we'll find some, oh, wait, there's something different. July 9, Lemawar's dressing room. Oh. Here we go. Emma! Uh-oh. Only one person I know who can munch with such venom. What are you doing here? Hello, Emma. You're looking as grumpy as ever. Oh, am I supposed to be happy? You give me the second degree in court and Prosecutor Gavin makes me look like a fool. You're talking about the bloodstained Mr. Latouse left? My department chief had a field day with that one. Even a blind person could see the shooter wasn't blind. Funny guy, huh? No. I don't think he's funny for making jokes like that. But that bloodstain helped uncover the biggest mystery of all. Now we know that Mr. Latouse was really with Interpol. We wouldn't have found that out without you. I suppose. Maybe that's why the chief gave me these after he was finished chewing me out. That it was my reward. Are chocolate snack who's popular down at the precinct or something? I was hoping we could check out the crime scene again. Be my guest. You're not going to find any clues in here. Though I did find something strange. Something strange? Let's talk. I met my embarrassment quota for the year, that's for sure. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it? Uh, how? I mean, think about it. Now you don't have to be embarrassed about anything else all year. If only it worked that way. It just bugged me to think that little kid outsmarted me. And it makes him even more suspicious now that we know he can see. He could have seen the air duct, and he could have shot that revolver. But that's how it sounded in... Oh, that's not how it sounded in Lamawar's testimony. You mean her saying she heard Detective Darian's voice at the scene? Hmm. That's right. Why can't we have a normal, straightforward killing once in a while in this country? <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that. The case. Is that true what you said in court today? You know, about the case? About how everything was happening according to those song lyrics? A guitar serenade, you mean? I found the link, you know.
First, Prosecutor Gavin's heart-shaped keyring was stolen. Then, Lemoir flew through the air. Then, Prosecutor Gavin's guitar caught on fire. And in the end, a bullet took Mr. Latousse's life. And he went up into the sky with a guitar. Well, 15 feet up, at least. It is kind of hard to chalk it up to coincidence. Hmm. I know. And I found it. You think the same person did all this? Don't ask me. I didn't do it. Neither did I. I couldn't fit through that air vent anyway. What? You all think I did it? <laughs> Sometimes I worry about that girl. So, what did you find? It's so little I must have passed over it yesterday. I found it under the sofa. What is it? Part of some device, I think. I haven't a clue what. The bit sticking out from the end looked familiar, so I had it examined. Turns out it's an antenna. Ooh. Ooh, like on a beetle? Like on a cell phone. This device must use an electronic signal of some sort. An electronic signal, you say? Hmm. Okay. Um, do we have that? We don't. She just talked about it and that's it? What did she say it was on? Okay, I found something strange. Found it under the sofa, part of a device. Maybe I need to show her, um, this. Do you think you could take a look at this? Hmm, small device. Looks like a transmitter. A transmitter? You press this switch here and it sends out a signal. No idea what it's for, though. A signal? You mean an electronic signal? What is it, Apollo? Say, Emma, you know that strange object you said you found, like, literally five seconds ago? Oh, this? Let me try pressing this switch. Oh. <gasps> Youch! It's on fire! Emma's device is on fire! What's the big idea? Uh-oh. Oh, it does kind of look like a lighter. Well, now we know what this is. An igniter. This part here must work like a lighter. It nearly lit me up, that's for sure. Hey, don't look at me like that. I didn't do it on purpose. Good job, Apollo! Yeah. <laughs> you messed up big time! I suppose. At least, we're getting somewhere with this case. Hey, Apollo. Let's ask Emma more about this switch. Now that she has some first-hand experience. Okay, so now we can talk to her about it. Gotcha. So that was probably how the guitar caught on fire. That's immediately what I'm thinking of. What are you trying to do, burn me alive? Come on, it's just a few sparks. It says you, you weren't the one holding it. I was right there. <laughs> I'm getting reminded of that scene from Baldur's Gate 3. There's enough sparks flying around here just with you two talking. Anyway, now we know this is a remote for an igniter. Let me see that for a second. Well? Well, this is definitely a little transmitter. The signal's weak. Probably only reaches 30 feet. A transmitter, huh? Remote trigger updated. Okay, so it's gonna say within 30 feet, so I don't need to write that down. Yeah, Starin was so mad. I know. So great. I I love the voice acting uh, for Asterion. His voice is amazing. Uh, updating the court record. Something cool that I uh, recently heard about. Um, I'm blanking. I think his name is Neil, right? Oh, so disrespectful that I can't remember his name. I, I'm, I'm sure it's Neil. I'm just like, I want to make sure. Yeah, Neil Newbin. Right. Um, I recently saw something cool about Neil. So I think that he's at, what is it, GDC? It's a, a video game convention. Uh, he's there, and they were doing an event, I think, for autographs and stuff. And he stayed, like, an hour after the convention closed to see every person that was standing in line. Uh, I just saw it, like, fleetingly. I saw a video of someone talking about him, uh, I guess, like, from the convention. I was like, that is so sweet. Like, he's just such a sweet person. Everything I see about this guy, he just seems like an amazing person. So. 
We love Asterian. I love Asterian's character, but it's also nice that the VA is uh, amazing. Yeah, so kind, you know? That is sweet of- I know! And like, you know, it's not even like that needs to be the standard or anything, because, you know, people, you know, VAs have certain schedules to meet and things like that, so it's not like everyone should be staying an hour after, but I think it was incredibly kind that he did that. Because I've been in that situation where I'm waiting in line and then it gets cut off in front of me and I don't get to see the person I'm waiting for, you know? Need to finish Baldur's Gate 3, but college got in the way. And then Infinite Wealth came out. I know. There's too many video games. There's too many. And then me and Ruo started a second playthrough of Baldur's Gate, and we only played it for one day and then never went back. So <laughs> that's also waiting for us, but I need to finish Tears of the Kingdom first, so we're working on that now. But you definitely need to finish Baldur's Gate 3. It is an amazing game, an amazing story. I loved it. It's funny because before last year, I don't even think I'd ever heard of Baldur's Gate. Because, you know, there was a Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. Um, I had, like, never heard of it. And um, I think it was Anna that first told me about it when we met up at the uh, the convention that we, we met in person at. And... Uh, I was like, oh, that sounds interesting. And then I started seeing everybody talking about Baldur's Gate 3 after that. I was like, oh, yeah. And then it came out and then everyone was talking about it. I was like, I should try it out. And then I became obsessed once I started playing. So me and Robo finished it. Um, and now I love it. It's like one of my all-time favorite games now. It's just really cool. Cool how that happened. After you finish Infinite Wealth, you're going to go for BG3. Yeah, makes sense. Dragon's Dog, but can wait. Yeah. Yeah. BG3 was amazing. Okay, um, let's see. Incidentally, if you look at a cross-section diagram of the stage area. Let's figure this out. Oh, interesting. Okay. Let's see. 30 feet from Lamoire's dressing room. By the piano. <sighs> Everything I'm seeing is pointing to the kid, because the kid was at the piano. But, I'm sure it wasn't him. It could have been someone in the audience. That covers the backstage completely. It also looks like it would cover the stage. Okay, I I'm gonna write this down because I don't know if it's gonna like actually show me anything. Oh my gosh. Hey friend, good to see you. Happy Thursday. Not sure how long I can stay on account of the big sleepy, but hello. I appreciate you popping in. I hope you're having a good night, even if you're sleepy. Any plans for the weekend? I'm going to a birthday party tomorrow. Spend some time with my friends. Aside from that, Nothing much. Um, okay, wait, I'm writing things down. So the transmitter reaches 30 feet, which covers the two dressing rooms, part of the audience, and the piano, the stage. It does not cover... the uh, drums, I guess. It's the only other thing it's showing. Like the back of the stage, I suppose. Seriously, I need game studios to stop making 10 out of 10 games. I need to play Rebirth and then P3 Reload. Stop making good games. There's too many. I know! Like, there's not enough time! <laughs> there's not enough time! I want to play all the games. Okay, it looks like it would uh, cover the stage. And then I have this game, too. I gotta get through, like, three games in one. Oh, Lord. And I feel like this is why I always put Ace Attorney on the back burner when new games come out, because it's really easy to get back to it. They have, like, all the different chapters and stuff, and I don't have to remember the controls. I just have to take notes on what's happening in the cases. But especially if I end between a case, it's pretty easy to come back and just pick it back up. But, you know, uh, if I leave and come back with a game like FF7, I feel like I'll forget, I'll forget the uh, mechanics and things like that. So I don't know. I feel like maybe after I finish this case, not this case, sorry, the first game of the trilogy here, I'm definitely going to play something else for a little bit before I go back and finish game two and three. Um, I want to get back to Chronicles because I would hate to just like keep moving on to new games and never finish Chronicles because I was having a great time with it. I just, you know, other games came out. I really want to finish that. And maybe after that, I could play another game before we come back to Apollo Justice? I don't know. 
It's just going to make Apollo last even longer. But, you know, once I'm done with Chronicles and then I finish Apollo, there's no more Ace Attorney. So I would just not stream Ace Attorney anymore, you know, after I'm done with all the games. So maybe we need to drag it out a little bit. <laughs> make it last a little longer so I don't have to say bye to Ace Attorney forever. Unless they come out with some more games, but it took a while for them to come out with this trilogy in the first place, so. Oh, there's also Stellar Blade coming out, a new Bayonetta near core game. Huh, I have not heard of that one. We're still in Act 3 of Ghost of Tsushima. Do you mean when I just, like, stop playing it? <laughs> I'm never picking it back up, I swear. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're not going back. It's been too long now. It's just one of those games. There's like, there's only a few. I would say I could probably count on one hand the number of playthroughs that I had gotten pretty far in that I just never went back to. But it's just one of those things. I, I got kind of bored with it. If I'm going to see the ending, I'm going to look up someone doing it, you know. Yeah, I had not heard of a uh, Stellar Blade. Kind of seems unlikely anyone would use this on stage. A forum diagram added to the court record. So we do have this now. Okay. Guess I'd best be getting on with my investigation. We're off to look for more clues elsewhere, then. I feel better just knowing what this thing is now. I'll have to look into igniters a bit more later. Good luck! I'd like to know a bit more about igniters myself. Alright, so we got the igniter added to the court record. Let's look at everything. Mm -hmm. So this shows a diagram, but it doesn't show what the transmitter can reach, so that's good. We will leave that. Let's look at this. All these little parts. It's pretty complex. I'm guessing this is where the fire comes out. Other than that. The thing machines run even if we don't know how they work. That's what Daddy always says. Not really a saying you want to go around repeating, Juicy. Okay. That is probably it for now. Okay. Can I present this to her? You think you could take a look at this, Emma? No. Emma? Her rate of chewing is increasing. Better back off before it's too late. <laughs> okay, so I don't think we need to talk to her about anything else. Maybe this? No. Okay. Maybe the tape? No. It's just snacking. All right, let's get out of here, I guess. Um, maybe we can show it to someone else. If I get stuck again, we'll look at the backgrounds. Maybe I can look at this. It even says don't open. This was the window where Lamawar saw the crime from. I wish it was that simple. Kind of hard to see a crime when you can't see. But she did hear it. Yeah, but the window was closed. Maybe she heard it some other way. Oh, yeah. If she was walking down the hallway, she would have heard it with the earpiece, probably. Which would mean that the person who killed had an earpiece in. That That's kind of where I'm trying to get with this, this evidence we have right now. But either way, let's get out of here. Let me write that down. That is my theory. My game theory, so let me write it down. Um... I think Lammy heard the gunshots through the earpiece on the ground. I forget. So we need to figure out whose earpiece it was so we know who wasn't wearing one. And then that can probably rule out who murdered, maybe. So maybe the person who killed was wearing in one? Or maybe the manager was wearing one? I don't think he was, though. Maybe it was the manager's. I don't know. We gotta- that's definitely gonna be the key to this case, though, is that earpiece, for sure. As soon as I saw it on the floor in the beginning, I was like, that is gonna be important. I know it. The chewing is increasing. We just have to find out who doesn't have an ear. Okay. 
Didn't need the earpiece anyway. Okay. <laughs> Let's... Can I talk to you about anything? No. Let's present the stuff that we found. You think you'd tell me about this? No. Okay. No. No. So she will not tell us anything. Let's move back here. Nothing to say, right? Okay, let's try presenting everything we found. So he didn't react to this stuff. Got this? No. It was the blue badger, of course. He's evil. He was evil all along. Okay, he doesn't react to that either. Okay, so maybe we go to a place we have not gone to. Let's go to the other dressing room. Maybe someone's in there? No. Okay. Let's go out of the stadium then. Oh, something new here. July 9, Sunshine Coliseum. There we go. What? Come to laugh at the murderer? Darian. That old bag opens her pie hole and wham bam, my life goes down the chute. Thanks. They won't let me work while I'm a suspect. Marion isn't in the best of moods, is he? Not many people are these days, it seems. It is a crime scene. Not exactly the happiest place to hang out. If he's a suspect, why is he allowed to just be walking around free? Shouldn't he also be in the detention center? Then Gavin had to go rub salt in the wound. My alibi's rock solid. Rock solid. Let's talk. I know his pompadour is very weird. I think it's supposed to look like a um like a torpedo. Because he's like shark themed. That's it. About your alibi. You have to ask. I just I don't like how bouncy it is. <laughs> the shooting happened right in the middle of the third set. Um, that's right. The music was blaring when we heard those gunshots and found Mr. Latouse dead. I've got 10,000 witnesses who saw me, too. Right there on that stage. Your guitar playing was something else. Thanks, little lady. See? This whole thing's a sham. I can't believe they aren't letting me work. There's no need to yell at me. It's Lamawar's fault. She was the one who said she heard his voice at the moment of the crime. Man, I never even talked to that old windbag. How could she possibly identify me? Don't talk about her like that. He won't let you work? He won't let me work. Gavin, it says I gotta lie low till the suspicion is clear. What suspicion? He can be such a stick in the mud. Mr. Gavin, a stick in the mud? He may look all flashy and showy, but he's straight as an arrow, man. Except when he's depressed. You hear him whining the other day? Oh, you mean the thing with the mixing board? And then there was that performance just now. What was that all about? This part is off. Which is that? Hmm. Second guitar. Ah. It was you, Darian. He's just a perfectionist is all. Not a bad guy, really. Well, I think the Gaviners are the best. I have all your albums. The band's fine, too. Gavin can write a good tune. I'll give him that. Come to think of it, I haven't seen Prosecutor Gavin around much. Oh, him? He's down at the prosecutor's office, most likely. Prosecutor's office. Never been there, have I? The data on the victim should have come in from the Interpol. Or from Interpol. Normally, I'd be down there dealing with it. Normally. Hello. Let's go check it out. I've always wanted to see the prosecutor's office. Hmm. Maybe that's not such a bad idea. Right on. All right. Say hi for me, okay? Oh, and screw you. <laughs> and tell him I want into that crime scene. Uh, we'll be going now. Hey, wait. Yes? What do you really think happened? Really? You don't think I did it, right? Well, great. Way to instill a guy with some confidence. Just remember, I was ripping it up on stage when it happened, okay? Ripping. Don't get led astray by some siren song, eh? Get this one wrong, and you'll be eating humble pie for a year. I'll bake it myself. He's gonna kill us. <laughs> Let's not talk to him anymore, alright? Detective Darian Prasen. 
He's one stone I'd leave unturned if I had a choice. All right, let's skedaddle. I guess we're going to Gavin's office. Let's do it. Yeah, he's wearing like a shark onesie thing. It has a zipper, but it kind of looks like a onesie. Yeah, I, I love the design of it. July 9, Prosecutor Gavin's office. Look at all these guitars. He's even got a ukulele. So this is it. The governor's head office. Oh, look, the burnt guitar over here. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> the strings. It's not the band's office. It's the prosecutor's office. Yeah, so that's why I'm asking. What is this creepy thing? Object. Whatever. Looks like Prosecutor Gavin is on the phone. Oh, well, guess we'll have to come back. Or we can hide behind that bookshelf real quiet-like. That's eavesdropping. Why? We'd just be waiting, quietly, so he won't notice. What if we heard something scandalous about the band? She would make a good reporter for a gossip magazine. What? A replica? So why was he after it in the first place? Yeah, the twos. Twos? <gasps> we are hearing things. Look, don't talk to me about those Virginians, okay? Just get me that report, Chop Chop. And stop leaving mysterious objects in my office, okay? It's times like this when I start to miss Darian. Huh? My better half. Uh, hi! Just thought we'd drop in. Hope you're not mad. How could I be? There's not enough tee hee in the world in any case. Have a seat. Prosecutor Gap, philanthropist. Watch and learn, Apollo. So, who have you come to see? Huh? Clavier, lead vocalist for the Gaviners. Or Prosecutor Gavin, scourge of the courtroom. What do you think he means, Apollo? I think he's giving us a choice. We can either ask him about the concert, or the case. Which way to go? Save here too. Tee hee! That would give me a tee hee! I'll get- I'll do it to it! Tee hee! Flavior needs to stop shredding and start cleaning this office. I mean, it's not too dirty. He's just got some clutter here and there. That's all. <laughs> That's tough. The case. Ah, that reminds me. Did you see the paper today? Yes. I always read the TV section. Good girl. How about you, hair forehead? I read the funnies. Then you will not have seen this. Concert of tragedy! Oh no! Concert of tragedy. The prosecutor's deadly song. Ooh, is that a new show? I haven't heard about that one. It's not a show. It's an article. News. You know? Oh, does this have anything to do with the case? Since getting back from the trial, my phone has been ringing off the hook. How does it feel to take a man's life with a song? Have you ever hummed a man all the way to death row? Do you think you could sing for me over the phone? It is endless. Endless! Thanks to the case you made today, of course. Oh, that was all Apollo's idea. Hey. Hmm? Is that a newspaper over there, too? Ah, yes. The Virginian Daily Bugle. Go ahead. Take a look. What's better, teehee or yippee? They're both pretty good. Teehee, Darian is a bit sussy. <laughs> Honestly, he is. Uh, thanks, but I can't read Virginian. Oh, that's right. Suffice it to say, this is big news over there as well. Though they didn't go so far as to mention the lyrics to my song. Probably no one in Virginia could believe it. It's probably seen as just a theory at this point. Just a theory! A game theory. Their journalists didn't need- didn't see the need to mention it. That makes sense. I hardly know what to think of it myself. Virginia newspaper added to the gore record. Article about the case doesn't mention the lyrics of Lamoire's ballad. <laughs> I think Teehee and Yippee both have their place in this world and in our home. Teehee is the murderer! <laughs> That's what Apollo should say in the next uh, day of court. Teehee is the murderer. 
Amor's testimony will probably be the in the evening edition, I'd imagine. Which is why I've had Darian step down from the investigation. Yeah, we ran into him moping in front of the Coliseum. Lamawar was my invited guest, so it is a rather delicate situation. You understand how much I want to solve this case. Quickly, if possible. I really love that song. It has such a great atmosphere to it. You co-wrote it with Lamawar, if I remember correctly. That's right. It was last year. I had gone to tour Virginia's legal system, as a matter of fact. And that's when you heard Lamawar's voice? It was at a small jazz club. I wept that night. I knew I had to meet her, talk with her. So I used my influence, which is not inconsiderable, to arrange a meeting. Wow, prosecutors really have a lot of clout. I think he's sort of a special case, Juicy. Thankfully, she liked the work I did, and we wrote a song right there backstage. Machi on piano, that dulcet voice, and myself on a guitar that I borrowed from Lamawar. And music history was made. Probably not an experience your average lawyer would ever have, like Apollo. It is a memory I hold dear, and the song we wrote that night was this. And that very guitar is right over there. You mean this charred lump? Oh, so that is Lamawar's guitar. Interesting. Don't call it a lump. That's a piece of history. And it's only borrowed, not really charred. Oh, sorry, not borrowed. It's not, It's only browned, not charred. No matter. I shall never sing that song again. I wouldn't have used that guitar again either, if, even if I could have. What happened during that song anyway? Why did his guitar suddenly catch on fire? You think you could show it to us? Your charred, I mean, slightly burnt guitar? I'm sure he doesn't mind. What more could happen to it? Okay, so we can look at it. That was an impressive bit of pyrotechnics that did this. That's the guitar from the concert, isn't it? <laughs> I thought it was, uh... Oh, oops. Let me see what he said. I thought it was one of the staff playing a gag on me. I never guessed that wasn't the end of it. I had a specialist analyze the guitar, incidentally. Oh? Did you find anything out? He didn't have a lot of time, so it's still unclear. But the results he came up with were intriguing. Intriguing? How does that guitar tie into everything that went on? Sounds like something we should ask about. Okay. See, sometimes it's obvious the next step is. It was a beautiful instrument. It was played lovingly for many years. A guitar befitting a woman like Lamawa. How did it end up here? She gave it to me. I mentioned how much I enjoyed playing it that night, and she made a present of it. So this guitar is from Virginia? That it is. We couldn't carry it on the plane. Changes in air pressure and humidity ruin the wood. Huh. So we vacuum packed it in Lamoire's studio. I used a special shipping service available to me for transporting evidence. He brought it right up to my office for me. Wow, so he used it as- He used, uh, something for evidence to bring the guitar. Amazing. Pristine and untouched. See, prosecutors do have a lot of clout. I still think he's a special case. Such a valuable guitar. It's too bad it got burned. Guitar was added to the court record. A gift from Lamawar sent from Virginia. Burned the night of the concert. Okay. What was it that you were saying earlier? Something about intriguing results from an examination of the guitar? That's right. What was that all about? Well, you know how guitars have a round hole in the front? It's called the sound hole. Ah, well that's what it's called. Well, they found something attached to the wood just inside the hole. A broken device of some sort. A broken device? Yes, this, in fact. Oh! The examiner is busy with evidence for the case now, however. So he'll be checking this out once he's finished with everything else. Odd. The device looks strangely familiar. Okay, so let's show him that. I see where this is going. How could a prosecutor abuse his prosecutorial powers for petty personal peccadillies? <laughs> How could he? It's preposterous. It has to be one of these. What is it, Apollo? That device that was found in your guitar. Take a look at this. Oh, I, I get an eyelash in my eye. Why, that looks like the same thing. What is it? It's an igniter. 
Another one? It was at the crime scene in Lamawar's dressing room. Detective Sky found it, actually. At the scene of the crime? What could that mean, I wonder? So nothing else? Okay, so let's show him more stuff. Uh, Prosecutor Gavin, about this remote. Wait. Excuse me. Did you say something? This remote control might be valuable ammunition for the trial tomorrow. It's too early to show my hand now. You would think someone with such a loud voice would speak more clearly, y'all. Yeah? Okay, so we don't want to show him that. My apologies, but there's no way I'm going to talk details about the case with you. If you want to get my attention, bring me something dramatic. I'm not here to get your attention, Gavin. I'm here to get your information. Hmm. Okay, so nothing there. Let's look at the... Let's look at this. The guitar! There's lightly scorched, and then there's this. It's burned clean through! Yep. It's pretty much a useless piece of junk. It's kind of like you after a trial, Apollo. Which part? Burned clean through, or the useless piece of junk? Por que no los dos? So, nothing else. Okay. Nothing of note. Unless I can see something inside of it. Maybe. No. Oh! Oh no, that's just the hole. <laughs> Oops! And yeah, there's nothing in it. I don't know, sometimes they hide stuff. Let's examine this. We can't. Well... Another dead end, huh? Maybe I can keep presenting things to him and see what he says? The guitar serenade. Might I ask, did you enjoy it? It's a lovely song. I got all teary-eyed. Ah yes, the cursed song that turned a concert into a tragedy, wasn't it? I was singing it for you, Fraulein. <laughs> Add quote. Oh, that's just the whole. Thank you, Ruvo. <laughs> Thank you for adding this all-important quote that I said. Amazing. Well, th that's so special. It was Lamawar singing, actually. I am glad you were moved. It is that kind of song. Ah, I've run out of snide comments. Damn it! Okay, let's see. Nothing there. I like the little baby guitar. I do need to look at that before we leave him. Nothing there. No? Okay. Not even the keys? Okay. Maybe the earpiece. Yes. It looks like one of our tour issue headsets. Why are you wearing it, Fraulein? I thought it would be cool. I could pretend I was concert security and stuff. Actually, we found it at the venue and thought you might want it. Oh no, please. You keep it. It goes well with your cape, Fraulein. Hee <laughs> hee. You think? She said it! She does look like she belongs on a stage, that's for sure. That's all he has to say about it. What about- oh no, this we want to keep from him, my bad. I forgot! And he won't talk about the tape, okay. Then I think that is it? What if I show the guitar? No. Let's look at the background, because I do want to look around his room. It's a new area to look at. So, we already looked at the guitar, we can look at the wall. Oh yeah, yeah, I got it. Look at all the guitars. Why so many? You could never have too many guitars. They are like my lovers. I did not just hear him say that. They're backup guitars, Apollo. Don't you know anything? Rock and rollers always smash their guitars at the end of a show. No wonder it's so hard to make it as a musician. You know what? You should try rocking a little, Apollo. And breaking his guitars while he watches? That might be a little too rocking. Uh, huh, huh. Of course, I would never do such a thing. Did I not say they are like my lovers? Do I seem like the kind of man who would do such a thing to the ones he loves? No, no, not at all. I mean, you're Mr. Gavin, upstanding prosecutor. What happened to Prosecutor Gavin, God of Rock? They are like his lovers. It just reminds me of that scene, um, I forget the movie, I think it's like Surf's Up or something. Uh, 
Where he's like, this one's Sand. This one's Brianna. <laughs> it's that whole thing. These are my ladies. What's wrong, Apollo? You look confused. I was just wondering where the work chair in this office was. You're looking at my favorite chair right now. That's a massage chair, isn't it? That is an ergonomic... That is an ergonomic adjustable office... I love the ones with the vibrating rollers on your back. Those feel great. Did I say something wrong? No. I merely realized the futility of an explanation. Another guitar. What's that on the plate there? Oh no, we're looking at the plate. I keep like hovering over other stuff and then talks about something else. Me when I talk about my chickens. These are my ladies. This one here is omelet. And the other one is peep. Like the candy. Oh no, my PS5 controller started drifting. Oh god, I dread the day that my controller starts drifting. I'm so sorry. Those controllers are so expensive. I'm so sorry. Man, how long have you had the controller for? Like, I've had my PS5 not that long. Only one year. Probably one year in February, because I think I got it right for Ishin. A year and a half. That's really not that long. I swear they don't make stuff like they used to. I don't think I ever got drift on a controller before until... Um... Like, my PS4 controller did eventually get drift. And then, of course, the Joy-Cons. Those were the absolute worst. But I, I never really had drift before that on anything. Um, but I did have consoles die on me, like the Red Ring of Death with the Xbox. That happened, for sure. The Xbox 360 actually was worse. I think that our Xbox 360s died, like, twice. And not that long of a time, either. It was horrible. Uh, what's that on the plate there? Is that gum? Gum? Maybe he was chewing it when the phone rang. Ew! So he put it on the plate for later consumption. You would think a rock star could afford a fresh stick of gum. Don't jump to any conclusions now. That's no chewing gum. Take a closer look. Although I really shouldn't be offering, should I? What is that? It looks like a lump of plastic. Wait, that phone call. That's why I'm asking. What is this creepy thing? Object, whatever. Looks like Prosecutor Gavin's on the phone. So that's what he was talking about. A replica. What was he after in the first place? So Latus was after this thing? Prosecutor Gavin, does this have something to do with Mr. Latus? Wait a second. You were listening to my phone call, weren't you? Who, us? I, I tried to stop him, really, but he forced me to. Hey, you were the one digging for a scandal, Miss Reporter. Tell the truth, I'm not even sure what it is. But apparently it's a model of something undercover agent Mr. Latus was after. This lump? Do you mind telling us what you do know about it? Okay, so we found the next thing to do, but I want to look at the tiny baby guitar. Wow, look at that stereo. What? What about the guitar? To me, a life without music is inconceivable. I never turn down the volume, even when I'm working on a case. That's such a huge speaker. It must be really loud. This room is completely soundproof, of course. Really? At my place, I can hear when the neighbors turn their VCR on to record something. I remember those days. <laughs> Maybe you can get Mr. Wright to talk to them. Work something out? And lately, we've been getting complaints about Apollo's voice training. Maybe I'll go have a word with Mr. Wright, too. I can't look at the baby guitar! You could murder someone in here! <gasps> it was Mr. Gavin! He killed him! Is this milk? The view, ex the view is exhilarating, yeah? I sit here, gazing down upon the city, writing my songs. Try working on cases. It is the same thing. I write lyrics the same way I corroborate evidence. It is a harmony between the logical mind and the primal spirit within. Is it so hard to admit that you like staring out your window and daydreaming? And again, that was the window! I was trying to look at the... Maybe it's just water. <laughs> I'm just trying to make him look as weird as possible. Okay, let's move on. VCR? What is that? A type of 
pirate medical procedure? <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it is kind of wild when I sit here and think about it that there's like, I guess, like two generations at this point that we'll never know what it was like to have VCR, DVD, all that stuff. But I'm sure there's other people who feel like that about like floppy disks and things like that. I, I'm from an era of in between. So like when I was very little, I remember floppy disks and dial up and you know, all of that. But then very soon after I started like getting into like being a, like, a younger kid, but not a baby, uh, then DVD started being a thing. I mean, I had a Walkman, a DVD player, um, MP3 player. I, I grew up during the time where like touchscreen was first happening. And now, you know, you see a lot of little kids that are already using touch screens and have like a tablet and stuff like that and know how to work it before they even can talk, you know? It's kind of wild. Yeah, <laughs> we'll never know the annoyance of having to rewind the movie you rented before returning. Yep, yep, yep. I went through that too. There's, there's entire generations that don't know what Blockbuster is. <laughs> oh. It's really funny because I, I remember liking Blockbuster a lot because, you know, we would go there like after school, we would go there and get a movie, you could rent games there. Um, and then Netflix became a thing and it kind of killed Blockbuster. I mean, literally, uh, I even remember a story of how they approached Blockbuster to like get in on what they were doing and Blockbuster turned them down and then they went out of business. Uh, and now Netflix is kind of like not a monopoly, but I don't know. It's it's frustrating because streaming was supposed to make things really convenient, but now they're hiking up prices and there's like a billion different streaming services. So it's kind of turning into the new cable. So it's like you, you hope that technology brings about more convenience and good things for people, but then it ultimately capitalism ruins it anyway. So <laughs> that uh, sucks. <laughs> oh. Kids nowadays with their phones and video games. Why can't they just have fun with a ball and stick toy? Why can't they just play baseball? Oh my God. Oh. I I just hope I don't become one of those people where I'm like kids these days and their technology. Like, yay and shitification. <laughs> yay. <laughs> Let's talk about a strange lump. This was found in Mr. Latusa's bag. It's apparently a replica of something. It looks like an egg. Like a bug egg. But rainbow. A, a gay bug egg. <laughs> a replica. It's a small lump about an inch and a half long. We analyzed it, but there's not much to say other than it's a lump of plastic. Perhaps it was to be used in the identification of whatever it's a replica of. You mean, whatever Mr. Latouse was after? That seems to be the most logical explanation. Well, well, what is it? Don't ask me, Fraulein. Oh? If you don't want to tell us, you could just say so. I've put, it in a, I've put in a request to Interpol via my contacts. Is that, is that the sound that happens when the bug is pushing the egg out? Darn it, I'm still 4,000 points away from the Bishy Bug Redeem. Quick, I gotta end stream before the <laughs> friend gets enough points. That is not my egg. That is not mine. <laughs> I may be a gay bug, but that is not mine. Oh, sorry. Um, Let me reread this. Uh, apparently, there's a block. Oh, wait. I put in a request to Interpol via my contacts in Virginia. But apparently, there is a block on information somewhere along the chain. Oh? There's something either Interpol or Virginia doesn't want to share. Something about this little piece of plastic. Mr. Latouse went through all that trouble to become Lamoire's manager. Just to come to this country to find out more about this lump? And he died for it. Alright, we got it in the bag. A replica of something held by Mr. Latouse. Apparently the focus of his investigation. I've sent someone to the Coliseum to fetch Lamoire. Perhaps she knows something about it being a Virginian. I believe that covers everything I'm at liberty to talk to you about. Oh, thanks for dropping by, Hair Forehead. 
Thanks? Why, you gave me so much information. That igniter, for instance. Oh, that. I've never met an attorney so forthcoming with prosecution. It's a big help. But perhaps you're just a tad naive, huh? I guess I could have hit it, but somehow showing it felt like the right thing. I could say the same to you, Prosecutor Gavin. Thanks for the information. About the uh, strange lump of plastic. One that Mr. Latouse was investigating. Hey, that's right. I've been thinking, Hair Forehead. We encounter many incidents in our lives, all of us. Not all of them simple. Especially not the ones where people are killing to song lyrics. That is why I try to at least remain simple inside. And I keep a simple goal, to discover the truth. That's why I like to keep relations civil, yeah? That is all. I can live with that. Um, Mr. Prosecutor? Fraulein? Can I ask you why you sing in a band? Ah, because I want women to turn and look when I walk down the street. That's pretty simple, too. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got work to do. Another time, perhaps. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> uh, let's go talk to Lamawar. I also like to keep simple inside my head. <laughs> oh, ignorance is bliss. July 9, Sunshine Coliseum. <laughs> you can just wear a funny hat. That's what I do. Night. You'll get this for free. Oh, it's you. You came at a good time. Hello there, Emma. What's up? Either of you know where Lamawar is? Um, well, I saw her in the backstage hallway a while ago. Yeah? That's strange. What's strange? I can't find her anywhere. I was supposed to bring her to the prosecutor's office. Lamawar is missing? It's hard to imagine her wandering off somewhere on her own. Being that she's blind on. Yeah, we'll help you look for her. Great. Thanks. Hi. I feel like they're not handling this topic as well as they could. Um, okay, let's go here and look around. Line 9, backstage hallway. This place is deserted. I wonder where Lamawar went off to. I'm sure she's okay on her own. Seems resourceful. I guess, but I can't help worry about her a little. Let's keep looking around the whole area until I find something to do. Because talking to Lemoire is the next thing I know I'm supposed to be get done. Nothing here unless I can look over there. Nope. Was that guitar case always there? I, can I look at it? Seeing these mirrors lined up like that makes me think I'm really in a dressing room. Okay, no, it wasn't about the guitar. Okay. Um. Keep moving. Keep it moving. Oh. July 9, 4.46 p.m. in the wings. Huh? The stage is pitch dark. Power breaker must be off for this section. Great. I'll go get someone. The guitar case is closed. Immediately I noticed that. Yipes. It was really dark out there. Dark. That's all Lamawar has when you think about it. What if you like to live in a world of darkness? Hey, Apollo. Huh? What? Doesn't something about the stage seem different to you? Mm-hmm. Like something's changed? Changed? I can't put my finger on it, but it's bugging me. Now it's bugging me too. What is she talking about? I see it immediately. Hey, that case. Wasn't that open before? Huh. Guess someone closed it. Wait, look. Where the case closes... Something's sticking out. That doesn't look like an instrument. I don't think it's... Let's open it, Apollo. We have to get Emma! Are you kidding? Lamawar was taken directly to the hospital. Emma ran around, barking orders, making phone calls. Lucy just clung to my arm and cried. And me? I was still in shock. Two bodies in two days is too, too many. She's dead?! 
No, maybe she's not dead. Is she dead? July 9, 5.53 p.m. Hickfield Clinic waiting room. Emma, how's Lamawar? Is she okay? Ah, you. We all owe you a big thanks, that's for sure. So, she's okay? Yes. Oh my god. She came to a short while ago. Oh my god. Okay, she's alive. She's alive. You found her before it was too late. Yeah, was she gonna suffocate in there? Just a little guitar nap? I mean, to be honest, when I see the guitar cases, they're really fluffy inside. They look kind of comfortable, but not if you're locked in. Against your will. That, that's good to hear. So what happened? Someone attacked her. She was struck on the forehead. By who? We don't know. But they hit her on the forehead, right? That's right in front of her. How could she not see? Oh, yeah, Trucy. Right. Would you like to see her now? Is that all right? She wants to thank you for saving her life. Dang. They did keep joking about how two or three Trucys could fit in there. That's true. Lamawar. Ah, uh, Mr. Attorney. You were the one who found me? Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm just glad you're okay. Tell me, what happened? It was after I spoke with you in front of the dressing room. I sensed someone approaching. I thought it might be someone coming to see me, but they said nothing. When I went to return to my dressing room... You were hit? I knew that very moment I knew. The assailant was trying to kill me. Oh. It was lucky for me the first blow did not knock me out. I turned and ran for the stage. Someone was chasing me. I could hear footsteps. Yet I reached the stage first. Why the stage? I had overheard maintenance people talking. The power to the stage area was off, they said, for electrical work. Oh. Darkness is my ally. There was a contraba uh, contrabass case near the stage. That is where I hid. So the assailant couldn't see you. Once in the case, I'm afraid I passed out. Wow, sounds like a really close call. So she chose to go into the case to hide. Do you have any idea who it might have been? Unfortunately, no. Whoever it was, they said not a word. So they probably knew that she was blind. I mean, hey, I'm really thinking it's the shark guy, Darian, because he went in there after we left and he would have a reason to kill her because she's the one witness that heard him. Uh, unfortunately, no. Whoever it was, they said not a word. Too bad. Yet, when I consider that I was struck high on the forehead, I must conclude that whoever hit me was taller than I am. Good point. Be sharp. And you're much taller than I am. You're about as tall as Apollo. That means it was likely an adult. Probably a man. Could it be him? Hmm? But why would anyone attack you, Lamawar? Oh, come on. The detective asked me this, too. And to her, I gave the same answer I give you. I do not know. Hmm. I mean, they could be trying to, uh, shut her up, basically. So we are here to talk about this, so we're gonna do that. Doesn't know who tried to kill her. Well, you know, if they didn't say anything, she wouldn't be able to tell. Because she can't see them. Nice of them to let her wear normal clothes instead of a hospital gown. I mean... Her outfit is just so slay. How could they make her change, you know? Could you smell your attacker, right? I bet. I bet that all the different characters realistically probably have different smells, like their cologne or perfume or whatever. She probably could identify them that way, but maybe it would be too easy for the game to do that. Okay, let's show her this. Lamawar, I wanted to ask you about this. Do you know what this is? This... This is what? Mr. Latouse was carrying it. It's a replica of the thing he was after. He was after? You know, you know, in his secret identity. As an undercover agent. So that's what he was doing. You mean, you know what? Yes, I know. Of course. This must be a Virginian cocoon. It is a bug egg! I mean, not an egg, but... Or rather, a convincing replica thereof. Why haven't I heard of a Virginian cocoon before? Why would he be carrying this around? Was it some kind of souvenir? I wonder. Let's talk. This must be a gay bug egg. Well, they call it Virginian. It must only be found in Virginia. 
For certain, all in Virginia know of these. It's a cocoon, so do you get silk from it? I do not know the details, I am sorry to say. I thought you said all in Virginia knew of these. There is one fact I do know about the cocoon, though. Something all in Virginia know. What's that? The cocoons. They are not to be taken out of the country. If someone does and is caught, they will be put to death. Put to, to, to death? Why? I do not know. Yet, if Interpol was involved, I'm sure there is a good reason. But this is just a piece of plastic. He was carrying a replica, but looking for the real deal. That's my best guess. So that's what he was up to. Tracking down Virginian cocoon smuggling. Ah. Gay bug egg! Gay bug egg! <laughs> okay, um, so victim was here looking into Virginian cocoon smuggling. So, so random. Uh, carried a replica made of plastic. It's illegal to export gay bug eggs out of Virginia. They're afraid of depleting their strategic gay bug reserve. They're very important to the population. Smuggling. It seems I was marked. Marked? Life changed for me with the popularity of my songs. I began to travel around the world. Oh, so you could have brought those Virginian cocoons with you. On my trips, yes. That was probably the suspicion. And Mr. Latouse was placed as an undercover agent to look into it. Virginia is a small, sheltered country. Not many of our people venture into the world outside. Is that why they suspected you? But Mr. Latouse wasn't a Virginian, was he? He was an Interpol agent, which means... What, Apollo? There must be some reason why Virginia doesn't want those cocoons getting out. Something scary enough to get Interpol involved. Huh? Like what? How could such a tiny ball of thread cause such a commotion? Cocoon smuggling. Mr. Latouse had Lamawar marked. Hmm. It couldn't be her. Huh? There's one other person I need to talk to. Yep. Thank you for talking to us, Lamawar. It was the least I could do. Actually, I have another request. If it is within my power. I need an interpreter. Someone who speaks Virginian. Hello? Would you come with us if you're well enough? I see. Yes, of course. I shall accompany you. Huh? Where are we going? Come on, Trucy. We're about to get to the bottom of this. Yes! Let's do it! Let's do it. July 9, Detention Center Visitor's Room! Machi. We came to talk to you about the case. Machi. Could you interpret for us, Lamawar? Yes. Machi, I'd like to talk to you about when we first met. And we still thought you were blind. Now we know the truth. You can see, right? I was completely fooled myself. Machi, isn't there another secret you're hiding from us? Wait, Mr. Attorney, what do you mean by secret? What do I mean by secret? Well... Oh. Uh, shoot, I didn't save. Well, it could be the cocoon. Um... I guess we gotta show the cocoon, right? What else could it be? There's not even any evidence I could use to do anything else. Yep, okay. Let's show the cocoon. If I'm not mistaken, you know something about this, don't you? Oh! Oh! Hey, you got a reaction. A big one. Machi, you didn't. Trucy and I are trained to see people's uncertainty. Not that we would have needed any training to see that one. Mr. Attorney, please tell me what this is all about. Lamoir, please interpret. Very well. I know you know something about this by your reaction. If you won't tell me, I might have to give it to the prosecution. And have them look into it. Hmm? He asks you to wait. Do not be so hasty. Machi? You know everything? Yes, everything. Sort of. Have him tell us about it. Very well. 
All right, we're doing things. Let me save. Oops. Show him the badge. He was a lawyer the entire time. <laughs> Let's talk about the cocoon. Rapid saving noises. I know I try to do it so quickly so we can get back to the game. What is this cocoon anyway? The cocoon, the silk, is a potent cure. A cure? You must cure some disease. It's a cure for incuritis. A cure for incuritis? A replica of a cocoon from which a remedy for incuritis may be extracted. But if it's a cure, why keep it in Virginia like that? Just think of all the lives they could save by sharing the medicine. I do not understand the reasons myself. Okay, well, at least we know what it is. A cure. And Mr. Latus was after cocoon smugglers. Wait, was Machi? Machi, you weren't. He couldn't be a smuggler. He's so little. <laughs> He's so little and small. Well, you're only 15 and you're sort of a magician, aren't you? Well, that's true. I am sort of a magician. You said sort of. Oh, to have a copy of that security camera tape. Well, Machi, are you a smuggler? He won't tell me. First he plays blind, now he plays dumb. I wonder, do you think he brought a cocoon here to sell it to someone? If Machi really did bring one into the country, was he planning on making a deal for its sale? Oh? I can't go home. Can't go home? I can't go home to Virginia. I do not want to go home. The penalty for taking a cocoon from Virginia is death. That's right. It's punishable by death. About the case. What about the case? He wants to tell us about Mr. Latus's death? This meeting's over. Oh? What the heck? Darian? Well, what do you mean? Visiting hours aren't over yet. There's a call from Machi from the Virginian Embassy. This meeting is over. Sorry. Oh, shit. Just give us five more minutes. We can call them back after that. Sorry. No go. Come on, piano boy. We're leaving. Darian, wait! I'm suspicious of him. I never liked you. Either of you. Huh? It's weird because it's kind of like too obvious that he's the bad guy, so I'm starting to question it. Darn it. We were so close. He was about to tell us. Hey, Apollo. He didn't want us to hear what Machi had to say. Apollo. There can be only one reason why. Is everyone ignoring me? Oh, sorry. This is it. I know who I'm after now. It all happens tomorrow. In court. <gasps> to be continued! Perfect timing. There you have it. Okay. So, let me write down some notes for next time. Because I won't be playing this again until next week. Uh, we think that, uh, that Piano Boy, I can't remember his name, Piano Boy might have been a cocoon smuggler for which you are sentenced to death. You know, Friday stream, um, I was going to stream tomorrow, but my friend is having a birthday party tomorrow. I thought it was going to be on Saturday, but it changed to Friday. Uh, so I won't be here tomorrow, but I will be back next Tuesday. Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep, uh, canceling Friday streams. It's not on purpose. It's just things keep happening on Fridays. I'm sorry. Uh, let me save. Yeah, that's going to be it for tonight. We're ending a little early just because this is a great stopping point, uh, to pick back up next time. We'll be doing the second day of the trial next Thursday and hopefully continuing next Friday as long as something doesn't happen again. <laughs> but yeah, so sorry. I won't be here tomorrow. Um, I'll make an announcement probably tomorrow letting everybody know. Uh, I meant to do it earlier today and it just slipped my mind and then stream happened. So anyway, I'll make an announcement tomorrow to let people know and I'll try to update the schedule on Twitch as well. Yeah, that's it for me. Happy birthday to your friend. Hope you have fun and cake. Yeah, we'll see. We're supposed to be doing like a, a spa day at home. So like face masks and stuff like that and snacks and maybe some sushi. I don't know. So it's supposed to be a good time. 
Uh, but either way, I appreciate y'all being here with me very, very much. Thank you for spending your Thursday evenings here. Uh, dream of gay bug egg, yes. All of you. All of you. <laughs> uh, I'll be dreaming of them tonight. Anyway, have a great night, everybody. Uh, like I said, I'll be back next week. Uh, I usually stream Tuesday to Friday. We'll be returning with more Infinite Wealth on Tuesday and Wednesday. And more Apollo Justice next Thursday and Friday, hopefully. Uh, but either way, there's my social media. I'm most active on Twitter and YouTube. We also have the Discord if you'd like to join. That's the best place to be for stream updates, like when I have to cancel the stream and go to a birthday party. So <laughs> be sure to join the Discord if you'd like to know when things are happening or not happening. And there are the raid messages. But either way, I hope you'll have a wonderful weekend and a uh, wonderful rest of your nights and weeks. And I will see y'all next time. Thank you.